Pounders, welcome back. Today is going to be a little different style of stream. There will be no draft, but we're going to be deep diving into all three of our player exposures. We're going to be looking at player differences, similarities, team takes, and that's just the beginning. Ben, huge shout out to you for putting all of our player exposures together and just putting in an incredible amount of work. So really appreciate you doing that. Yeah, sure thing. So starting off with mine and just sort of going over what these numbers mean real quick, this is going to be total exposure to that player. This is going to be for rookies. What percent of your teams have a rookie on them? So 98% of my teams have at least one rookie. 208, this is going to be the average ADP you drafted that player at. And then the ADP on the right is their current ADP. So Burton, he's he's someone that I believe it was Nick that put me on to Burton pretty early. And uh, we're seeing him rise still today. He's he's still rising. He feels like a he feels like a round three guy to me. I think if he goes in the third round, there's room for him to there's still room for him to move up. Yeah, I like and he's Burton. a super late pick. So that's that's sort of my take there. You guys, where are you guys at on Burton? Oh, I, I have tons of Burton. He's one of my favorite later round picks. I'm just sad I can't take him in the 20th anymore. Yeah, I'm I overweight. I'm, he's not one of my crazy clicks. I'm definitely overweight. I'm probably around 12, 12% or something. He, he had some off-field issues where he punched a girl that ran onto the field, apparently. But <laughs> other than well, that... <laughs> Well, <laughs> very funny. <laughs> but, I mean, that might have moved him down a little bit on some people's radars or boards, because. but I still think he's going to get some decent capital. Mm -hmm. And he's a play. I mean, he's at one of the biggest, you know, programs there is, and he right. is a deep threat. I mean, he's exactly who you want in best ball. Yeah, it, and he's free. Anyone, especially, like, after round, like, 14 especially is just like go get your guys at that point so i have a lot of teams with burton and washington someone i'm trying to catch up on on the back end which i believe i'm i'm overfield on still but he's not in my top exposures is javon baker uh he quickly passed washington after some name drops on some streams <laughs> but <laughs> javon baker is one of them the mooney hit was big for me for free agency and we're really going to see this have a huge impact on my Atlanta exposures. So like Mooney, he was a last round pick. Sometimes, not often, sometimes going undrafted though. And the way I utilized that early pick was drafting a shit ton of rookies and bringing in Mooney, who potentially, in my mind, could be a number three on a team. He goes to Atlanta, there's Pitts, there's London. He'll probably be behind Bijan too in target share. But I still think there's room for him to at least fit the mold on those teams. At 152, are you guys touching him? Let's say it's a fresh contest. Are you touching him at 152? I haven't been taking him, but I don't hate your entire idea behind it. I mean, I did consider him as somebody that could get signed. I thought he would, and he did end up in a pretty decent situation, you know, because, you know, Kirk can get the ball out. But like you said, there's a lot of mouths to feed there. So, but I don't hate it as a late round pick, but in the one fifties, you need him to do a little more. Yeah. So I yeah. probably will just keep an underweight position. Unless I take him in correlation some, but other than that, I, I'll probably stay pretty underweight. Yeah, I agree. If, it, if, he, if his price is at one fifty, that's just too a little bit too pricey for me, but uh, getting him at 215, yeah, I'm all in there. Yeah, I, would, I wish I had done it more, but I didn't, like, if I would known he was going to Atlanta and he was going in the 20th, I would have been clicking him a lot more. Hmm. I, I agree. I think 152 is probably a little rich. I think if we have a new contest, though, I'd still mix him in. I, I don't think I'd be above field, but uh, any any other big ones? I guess the the Wada one I'm super heavy on, especially for a player that goes so early. You'll see it. You'll notice like a lot of these guys go pretty late, like Roman Wilson. Uh, Ridley's another one. 
don't love the landing spot. So like this one is kind of now I'm I'm sort of full fading at this point, Ridley, because of my exposures were were higher to him when he was still thought to be returning to Jacksonville, let's say. I'm pretty low on Ridley. I have almost a full fade. Um, yeah. I also am very overweight on DeAndre Hopkins, though. So, mm -hmm. and yeah. I mean, it's just you know the second, con you know, just switching teams. Even though he got the money, I just think where he's going is too expensive. Mm -hmm. I do oh, think I that they might pass mm -hmm. the ball, but yeah, his price is a little bit of that I'm trying to avoid at this point. Yeah, it seems like it didn't bigger. move as much as it should have, too. I think the Titans are a good gamble, though. Like, I don't want to be too heavy on them, but they're kind of an unknown team. Like, they brought in a lot of help for Levis. So they seem to, like, internally at least think Levis mm -hmm. could be the guy. And if he is the guy, then I think all of these guys could definitely uh, pay off their ADPs. I don't know if any of them could be, like, a huge smash, but certainly pay off where they're going. I do have a lot of Titans. I mean, I do agree. Like in general, I do take Levis late. I just go with the cheaper options more That's fair. than Ridley. And Ridley going to Tennessee helps Levis more than anyone else, I think, too. So I don't mind even just going Levis with one of the pass catchers or baiting both pass catchers. And maybe you're just using Levis as like an advanced rate play, too. Uh, one that sticks out to my mind is London. Again, my Atlanta exposures, as we'll get to, are freaking high. And a lot of it just revolved around thinking that they were going to get an upgraded QB. So uh, 62%, um, this is team exposure to Atlanta. 16% London, average ADP of 35.8. This dude was, this dude is falling in some drafts too. I look back and I, I have some like London at 54. It's just pretty, it's pretty insane to now I believe in the CSV rankings, the next update that's coming up, I have them at 14. I That's one of my biggest regrets is not taking, being really super aggressive, knowing that they were going to get cousins and anticipating how big a rise it would be and getting more London. Cause I've been playing catch up cause I do want exposure there because I think they could be good. And mm -hmm. that, that was a mistake on me. I mean, I, I took him when he fell to me, but I wish I had just reached a little bit because I should have realized how much he was going to rise. He, he got a good, he, he got a good outcome though. So it's at the time there was unknown and with unknown, sometimes you hit, sometimes you miss. And that's just sort of the risk that, that comes with that. Yeah, ben, where are you at with London? Uh, I was clicking him a ton. I was definitely smashing him at the start. Um, and then like once he started to rise, I stopped drafting him. Like I put on a full fade because I was just like, I'm not going to build a better team than the teams I already have with him. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Was, like, That's fair. I was, you know, I had like a fifth round London. I'm like with CMC and Devon A chain. I'm like, how do I, and then there's like a right. lot of lot of examples of that. So I think uh, I have 14% London, and uh, yeah, my uh, I drafted him at 41 was my yeah. ADP. For him. Hell yeah! So yeah, my, mine's probably a little lower because I was still drafting him on the way down too. But uh, any no real other ones? I, I guess like Garrett Wilson, but we'll get into the first round exposures too. Let's let's quickly hit on RBs. Gibson was one, um, one of the hits again. Just the way I was utilizing him, hoping that he found a landing spot where he can catch fifty balls. Pairing him with rookies or pairing him with guys that are going to have slow starts. Not typically Chubb, but like Jonathan Brooks or or prototypes like that coming off injuries. J.K. Dobbins. But he's a floor guy. You know, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not touting the Gibson click. I think utilize the way you utilize him while drafting your teams matters, though. Like, if you're putting him with high upside guys, I think that click at the time made a lot of sense. At 167, I'm I'm not clicking him as much, at least. That's for sure. It helps he's a patriot, too, for you. you know. Yeah. Eh. 
I, I don't really take teams into consideration that much. Um, you think you don't. All of us except for Steph. So All Gibson, four of us, though, have a bias towards our teams. But get, rid of, get rid of Gibson on one-third of my teams and where's, where's the, the Gibson Expo? That's fair. That's fair. You know what I mean? So like, well, in fairness, my, mine mine is more that I didn't always land to be able to get CD, or I would have way more exposure if I got the right draft spots. You mean you don't like grabbing Dak and then hoping you get Brandon Cooks? I mean, there's not very deep receiver room right now. Um, I, I've taken Tolbert some now in the little board. That's been my Damn. new uh, idea because I'm. I'm I'm not sure they're going to take a wide receiver in the draft because, I mean, I'm doing the numbers here. They only have seven picks, and I have at least nine holes where they don't have a starter in a position. So I don't know if they're going to even be able to take a wide receiver in the actual draft. Okay. That'd be – I think that'd be hugely disappointing. Oh, it will be. For the Cowboy <laughs> fans. But that means <laughs> if they don't, like Cooks actually would be going in a really good spot right now. If they don't select a receiver, maybe. I mean, I don't, the chemistry wasn't great most of the year. He I don't came know on if towards it's the get end, though. Especially, he did a little bit. Yeah. But I, I mean, oh. if they don't fix the run, I mean, I, I don't know. It, I'm, I'm worried about the offense a little bit as a fan. No doubt. No doubt. And the contracts. I'd, I'd be worried. <laughs> There's a lot. There's a lot. <laughs> the Chris Rod, the Chris Rod hype before, uh, like. And, and part of this was so like high on Gibson, high on Chris Rod, just sort of expecting Gibson to leave. And then Chris Rod, you know, filling that number two role. Maybe they don't touch it running back. They bring in Eckler and these shares are likely dead pending an injury. So not clicking him anymore. Uh, Algier, I still think so. Like, again, the Atlanta exposure between Bijan, I'm overexposed. London, Pitts, I'm overexposed. Algier. So like my Atlanta uh, is is my highest and i'm sad to say chicago is my probably my second highest which is not not we favorable all, with these running backs. i stopped i stopped <laughs> putting chicago players on our big misses because i was like we all we all just butchered that i think it's fair lowest it's fair to didn't see swift coming to town i don't i don't think uh anyone really did but yeah. uh maybe Khalil herbert gets traded and uh that's that's basically the hope for for those shares for Roshan and Khalil Herbert, I think. I mean, I take Herbert. I still feel like Herbert has a different role than Swift, so he could survive if they had a two man backfield and Roshan feels like the odd man out, uh, which I don't understand why he's going ahead of Herbert. That makes absolutely no sense. And I wasn't hitting Roshan that much before because I still expected them to bring somebody in. Whether I didn't necessarily okay. think they were going to sign Swift, but maybe through the draft. You know, something. Yeah. He was just not a guy I was super bullish on coming into the season based on what we saw last year. That's fair. That's fair. So you end up you end up smoking on that hit. Now it is like a well, Roshan went at 128, I guess, and maybe even a little earlier. Um probably around that like one twelve range, I think, pretty early on. So he gets a super fall. Herbert doesn't fall nearly as much, which this is interesting, which means, in my mind, early on, the value click was Herbert um, falling 24 spots and Rashawn Johnson falling like 48, 46 spots. So uh, that's that's pretty interesting there. Uh, anything else besides I'm a massive spoon in the one spot with CMC at 12%? Jalen Wright, that's a pretty big I have, a, I have a lot of right. Average ADP uh, of 177. I got 13%, so yeah. It's nice. Everyone's over. I didn't, take, I didn't take as much early, though. I, it took me a little while to get totally on board. I had some questions. I mean, looking at his profile with production and stuff, and, you know, the more I looked into it, the more steam he was getting, then I got more mm -hmm. comfortable. But I wish... I took him more when he was like three. Three of he's my first like, four. Sorry, Ben. Go ahead. He was he's someone that could still get like a zero after the draft. You know, he might just be like depending on his uh, landing spot. Like, right. 
that goes for that probably goes for like 85 90 95 percent of these guys yeah. a lot of it's so landing spot dependent when do we go into those later rounds especially um three of my first four live stream drafts for the big board had jalen wright on them um and we're reaching about i don't know like 20 picks so he was someone we we're on early just because combine just was always a factor in my mind like this guy is going to crush the combine He's going to get a rise. Why not get the shares now? But I still think uh, if he does get the landing spot, he, he probably still has room to move up where he's going right now, which is, and this is a couple days old at this point. I, I think he's near 130s, 140s. That sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, QBs, T-Law. Super heavy on T Law and still around this ADP without Ridley. I still don't mind it. Um, some of these builds are two QB builds, some of them are three, but I think I'm leaning more into uh, the two QB builds with like A Rich, Prescott, even Lamar Jackson's my second highest owned QB. And <laughs> What do you guys think about this ADP for for Lamar? Is, is does he go too late, or is it is it just in my head? No. Yes. Oh, he, he yeah. <laughs> the only reason I don't have the same exposure is because people always seem to take him in my drafts, and I like can't get him. Like I've mm -hmm. been actively trying, like this whole time I've been actively trying, yeah. and I get what I get. And um, I think T Law is a great pick because he just feels like he's so easy to stack. And I feel like he does go yes. too late for his upside because I mean, I'm really in on like, I think Ingram's one of the best tight end picks. So it's just an easy pairing too, even though I'm not on Ridley again. You that's know, where we have that correlation. Or you could get, you could get Zay late. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff now that we assume he's going to probably be playing because we know the fallout of Ridley not being there and stuff though. So. Right. Yeah. So now you can even get a more discounted and it's a team that still could add to this receiver room. With such a deep, mm, yeah. deep draft, so even with Kirk Ingram, Gabe, you know, ETN, like it still should be a relatively good offense, even without Ridley. So uh, they'll have a lot of wide receivers to pick from when they're on the clock, too. So like whatever role they want them to fill. It's it's such a fancy football fan thing to like want. Like we want every pick to be like an offensive player. <laughs> We're like, all right, it's the first round. Why were only three receivers picked? <laughs> you know, and then we're all surprised. I mean, come on, we might have ten picks where we see what, like six, seven. <laughs> I mean, are like fantasy relevant oh, wow. players. I mean, this is gonna be a ridiculous oh, draft. I think so too. That's why it's so exciting. But that's why it's the letdown could be massive. It could be massive. That's all I'm saying. Just ha have a lot of alcohol ready. <laughs> uh, J-Dub's in the house. What's up, man? Artie's back to drafting as well. Dave's in the house. Ben's here. Jared, what's up? Um, yeah, I, I think Kyler is someone that goes too early. And, of course, I miss on fields here, like, massively. But I'm lucky I'm lucky. it's only at, like, 11%, just barely overexposed. Um, I went back and I looked – at how many of those teams were like three QBs versus two, because you're probably not as confident with two, depending on who your first is. And uh, I believe it was split like down the middle, two versus three. Are like, you still taking fields or did you stop when he went to Pittsburgh? I have him ranked in the 170s right now. And with his upside, if you're pairing him with like two pocket passers, Maybe you don't spend too much at QB. Maybe you're you're grabbing Goff, Aaron Rodgers with your stacks, and then you're just tagging in just a little Justin Fields. I think there's nothing wrong with that. And you're just hoping he plays the playoff weeks and he runs for his life. That's it. And no I one knows. No one knows who's playing those weeks. No one. Personally, I just think I want to wait for more information. That's kind of the way I'm playing that. I just okay. don't see that it's as big of an advantage. I did take it some earlier on, so that's where I do have some exposure. But I'm just – I may, like, in BBM, but I, I want to, you know, I want to hear at least, like, he's competing for the starting – you know, I want to hear the rumblings. Because, let's I mean, there's Russell some stuff Wilson. also. Let's say Russell Wilson starting day one. You get that news. 
I mean, he probably will. Does but I want to at least hear he's in the mix. Yeah. A little bit, possibly, but also there's like he has to play a certain percentage. I have to look at how the contracts fit. Fifty one percent. Yeah. And then so they, have to give a they might have some incentive six. not to play you. Mm -hmm. Especially at early. that point. So they, so there I think there's right. a, a bigger risk for him not playing at the end of the season than a lot of people are weighing it, depending on, you know, how they're doing and where the team sits. So Ben, where are you at with Fields and his current ADP? Oh, uh, he was a running quarterback, so early on I was taking all running quarterbacks. So he's my seventh exposed quarterback. I have, I have like I think I have eleven percent. Yeah, same as me. Yeah. How about how about current ADP? Are, are you mixing him in with three QB builds? Uh, I had I did add him in one uh, one of my last three drafts. I added him in. Yeah. Um, Already. Already asked, how do you feel about three QB build? One elite QB, then Russell Wilson and Fields. So you're basically guaranteeing one no. of those QBs. <laughs> I think if I get problem, an elite QB, I'm stopping yeah. it too. I, I think the problem everyone would agree with is only one can start week 17. So you're basically you're getting rid of one combination of a potential receiver, running back, tight end that could hit the lineup. So yeah, yeah I, that's I just capping your upside. I don't, I don't like to handcuff a quarterback on team. You're, you're betting against yourself because we want to find guys that are playing week 17. Mm -hmm. And only one of them is playing in those playoff weeks. I mean, yeah. I mean, you're threading the needle very thin to assume like, okay, maybe possibly somebody gets hurt week 16 and then the next guy takes over. But still, I mean, that you don't want to waste a spot. It's just I mean, that could be... It could be Kyron Williams and Pruka Nakua. I mean, you don't know who those late guys could be. Yeah, it's true. Anyone else on here surprise you? Uh, or we could skip. Everyone the tight ends. was low on Laporta. Oh, let's let's oh, go oh, to tight ends. Oh, sorry. Let's go. To, no, we could we could skip to tight ends. I have eight percent, and I think uh, you were second. Wow, I have a decent bit. I think. Oh, did you? Okay, maybe, maybe I'm maybe I'm misremembering that. Well, but I do take less of him maybe than some of the other elitists, I guess types, just because their prices are so ridiculous. It's not really a knock on Laporta. It's just that he probably goes semi appropriate, and everybody else is just so cheap. That's true. You and I are very high on tight ends. I think elites. that that's one of the biggest elites. edges right now. Like I think all the elite guys are just way too cheap. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, look at where were we drafting them last year? I mean, any of the late tight ends. I mean, it's at least two, three rounds later now. I mean, these if you guys just join us, insane. go down, slap the like on the live stream, hit the sub. We'll be doing these videos all summer long. Give Steph a follow. I put the link in in the chat for Twitter, as well as Ben, who just reactivated. I don't even know I had one. <laughs> we, gotta get, we gotta get this man at some followers. He's at four right now, guys. Come on. Hey, four? That's a lot more than I thought I had. <laughs> more people that are in the stream. All right. It helps when you have a Twitter, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta start somewhere. Four uh, in one day. That's pretty good. I, That's really I started good. Twitter like just over a year ago. So it'll grow, man. It'll grow. Just put charts together people love charts we got charts for days ben made all these um if you just join us though the first exposure that you're seeing is player exposure second is team exposure third is your average that you average draft position that you drafted them at and then this is their current adp and again we see more atlanta early before you know, getting a rise, expecting, and it's again making a bet on a team, going to get an improvement at QB. You hit, you get nice closing line value. Um, you know, try to find those those players, especially early in these drafts, that are going to get you some nice closing line value. And we'll go into the misses too down below. Ben unleashed, unleashed on us. So. We do have misses. Everyone does. That's part of drafting 150 teams before the NFL draft <laughs> and drafting before the combine. But uh, anyone, any other tight end 
you guys like or dislike the exposure of? Well, 13% Janu. Yeah, I'm with hard fading saints. I'm so low on like. <laughs> See, I, I actually, I pretty much, I don't have a ton. Okay, I'm lying. I have a lot of Derek Carr and Juwan Johnson because okay. they go way too Easy late. Backs. And I mean, he used to, he, it's just because I do take so many elites. Sometimes I do double elite, some, but sometimes I take an elite and then take a couple guys late or one or two. You know, it's 20 rounds, so sometimes I'll do two. And I do think he's a better option than some of the other guys, even that go a little before him, honestly, like he was injured some last year, but before that they used him in the red zone quite a bit. He was a converted wide receiver mm -hmm. and Derek Carr. If you look at his numbers, he's really not as bad as a lot of people chalk him up to be. And now that we have confirmation that he's going to be in, be the quarterback, massive value potential. There's a lot of value there. I mean, like anybody that's a starter that has a secure job that goes late is like kind of, where I would rather go with my quarterbacks. I don't want to be betting on guys at this point that might not be playing or are at a severe bench risk. So that's kind of how I'm looking at it. And I mean, we've seen him have spike weeks. I mean, I remember playing DFS. There's been some weeks where he was the winning quarterback somehow. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he can throw a deep ball every once in a while and they use him in the red zone. And that's pretty much what I wanted in the tight end going that late is just the ability to score some touchdowns and, get in there and they don't have Jimmy Graham anymore. So mm -hmm. I won't get screwed there. Ben, you like Juwan or do you like Hunter Henry who was sort of going in that similar? similar I would take age? Hunter Henry over Juwan, just uh, tendencies of rookie quarterbacks to favor their tight ends. Uh, and I just, I, my biggest worry with the saints is I just don't trust the offense. They just seem to have no identity. Like they don't have seem to have check down to them. Kamara every play. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, you, so you trust the Patriots? Hell no. Uh, I, I would trust a rookie quarterback to bail out. To use but you don't even know who the rookie quarterback is, and you still don't know 100 percent if they're getting a rookie. I mean, we don't know anything. There's a lot more uncertainty there. Now, I'm not saying I'm against Henry, but yeah. where he's going, if I can wait a little longer and take a little more certain situation, that I think is a similar bet. Oh, I was so taking. Like, yeah, I, I was taking Henry a lot later. Uh, yeah. Than what okay. So like, what do you what are your guys' thoughts on Conklin? Like, obviously, team if they bring in Bowers, like, yeah, he's, he's done. But he goes late enough, at he goes uh, like one ninety still, I believe. He's in the right. I took range. him more earlier before there was as much the steam on Bowers. Um, it's more a correlated pick. Like, I'll take him sometimes if I happen to have Rogers or you right. know stuff there i don't hate him as again if i need a late guy you know when you get to those late tight ends it gets gross really fast so if i do wait on tight end he's definitely still in my pool but i don't have very much of him it's not like an active target the jets are another team that i'm soft fading uh a, for a similar Ooh. reason to the saints but just not as egregious okay. uh i think it's more like their price and i don't trust Hack it. I don't trust uh, uh, Sala. I don't like. I I don't really trust the coaches on the team. It's the Jets historically, which I mean, that's not really an argument. But uh, and Rogers coming off an Achilles at age forty two season. Right. Stay in the pocket. So, don't run. I like that. Well, here's the thing, though. What we need him to do. We saw Brees and Garrett do. Good enough already. Oh yeah, Last they're year. very good players. They're very good players. So they don't need Roger to really do much. No. I mean, all they need is I mean, Rogers had like even a crippled Roger standing in the pocket and throwing the ball near them to me has got to be an upgrade on what we saw last season. So it's like, that seems to be like a baseline, but we can expect. And we, and then I expect that Brees is going to get only healthier this year coming off his second year off of his injury. He doesn't need that much volume. Like they don't need a lot to hit. No, and I, kind of I, how I, I'm I, looking at it. I'm not saying I want to be overexposed to Rogers necessarily or the rest of them, but those two players, I wouldn't want to have a big fade stance. Personally. I don't have a big fade. You can break it. Okay. I have, I have like 8% Wilson and then I have like 6% okay. Reese. Okay. So like, I'm not, that, that's but, fair. Yeah. yeah. They're very, they're both very good players. 
<laughs> my first round, Garrett Wilson's my dude. Fourteen percent again. You're making the bet that Roger stays healthy. If he doesn't, like, it's not going to pay off. Like it, it is what it is. But all of these Jets players are priced as if Rogers is playing the whole season. So that's the way I'm going to draft. I'm, I'm drafting Garrett Wilson in front of Puka and AJ Brown. So you see, Puka's still at nine percent. I'm a massive spoon. Like, there's no way around this. Somehow, after the early portion, the first third of the season, getting the back end of the draft. Pick nine, pick nine, pick nine. We went on a run. We went on a run of CMC and Lamb. You had some days that Bijan was going at one right after the Kirk news, and we like we were scooping these guys at three and four. So we, we ran into some good uh, some good pod luck too to get these exposures where they are. But I, I also like Bijan too. I'm at eleven uh, percent. I, I see one here? thing sticking out. Is Your Tyreek. It's. Well, considering that I'm ridiculously high and you're ridiculously low, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's It's got to come out of somewhere is the way I see it. Um, so we have 4% here and 5% here, so 9%, right? So if we add 4%, we have 5% left. It, it's got to come out of somewhere. And I want it to be – I believe my chase is at 9 or 10 now, and I'm still clicking Bijan. So – but that's a pretty scary guy to be low on. I mean, we've seen what he it is. does. I mean, single single game ceiling. It's more of a bet on end of season, not playing as many snaps, maybe preparing him for the playoffs, not our playoffs, the real playoffs. So it's sort of a bet on on his snap count towards the end of the season. I'm gonna try to add it. Drew here. I don't know if it's gonna let us put a fourth. Hmm. Can I? What if I? Bye, Pat. <laughs> so, so this is the new stream. Apparently, Pat's just... <laughs> uh, so you can. <laughs> Could you still hear me? Oh, yeah. Drew's... No, couldn't hear you. All, all you need, like, one sub. One sub to the channel. Drew comes back. Another sub. I'm back in. <laughs> it's... Right. What? Is that real? No. <laughs> Wait, what? I'm so confused. <laughs> Your lies. All right. Um, what are so, we- how do you feel about Tyree Kill? Well, that's what we were talking uh, about a second ago. I think it's the same as everyone. I'm lower on him. I've been going uh, Chase. No, three. not everyone. I I'm ridiculously high. You're sixteen. Oh, you're high. Sixteen. You're two, Drew. I yeah. mean, come on now. He was the widest. I mean, he had the best PFF grade. He had the third most targets, playing a less game than the other guys that were ahead of him. Yeah, yeah. he was a wide receiver too. In like 119 receptions, season. he yeah, had the most so touchdowns. He had. I like him. He's just—it's purely he's getting older. He's a speed guy, but I he like is not showing. But he's not showing any signs of slowing down. I know. I don't. I don't want to have a bag of him the year that he slows down. I, I'd like to be in front of that. Yeah, but so, I mean, uh, they usually show a little bit. I mean, we're not playing Dynasty here. I mean, he oh, showed up. But he, was, but he, he did talked. kind of start slowing down last year. I mean, he had an injury. Year. He had a little bit of an injury, but so did a lot of guys that were still taking. Uh huh. But uh, I, I would mean, guys get injured. That doesn't mean he can't come back. Yeah. Like, it wasn't something that was Chase. so developing. I would rather have Chase. I would rather have Jefferson. I'd rather have Lamb. You could talk me into him over the running backs, but uh, yeah, oh, lamb, I have a yeah. bag. I have a bag of Chase. Um, oh, I still have a lot of Chase. I like Chase. I, I do think there's right now with the uncertainty with Jefferson and the quarterback situation, that's enough of a downgrade. Yeah, for me I've to push him back. I've been slamming Jefferson since uh, he's been falling. I'm up to seven percent now, but uh, Chase, I'm at eighteen percent. Uh, lamb, I'm at ten percent. So yeah, I just in Hill. I guess I was at two. I think I drafted him once since then. So now I'm at three. Berg is fading Hill a little bit too. Let's cover the big hits, big misses, and then we'll switch over to Steph's ADPs. Um, so seeing Ricky here, my ADP of 197. Mooney was a big one. Jalen Wright was a big one for us. Pitts, Curtis Samuel, some huge closing line value. On Curtis Samuel, Drake London for where he moved from to and getting him early in the forties and fifties when he fell. Dottle, 
Pickens, which I still think his ADP should be in this range. Uh, and then mix in after Matthew Berry's uh, little rant on him not being uh, in Cincy. It happened. He fell, and then he fell to the right spot. <laughs> so yeah. it's kind of funny how that happens. Biggest misses, Fields. Obviously drafting him early, rushing QBs. Um, yeah, it, I'm, I'm in. I'm, I'm in. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just going to draft them. Luckily, it was only 11%. Could have been more. Herbert, not the worst one. Twenty. He, he drops like two plus rounds. Um, but the Rashawn Johnson one definitely, definitely hurts. Going to need a trade there for this to like feel decent. Uh, Marquise Brown just sort of fading, fading the player. Really, I am currently still fading him <clears throat> at his current ADP. I think he belongs around like seventy five ish, and even then, like that's where I'm, that's where I'm touching him. He's really like the one free agent that I was like, all right, just taking the chance that he doesn't get like the nuts landing spot. Jacobs, I don't like pushing him up as as high up as he is, but. uh I do recognize I the, the role that he's going to have should be pretty big. Should be it should be Aaron Jones's role, maybe a little more. I don't like the running backs gonna... to go after him. <laughs> so well, here's guy. kind of, <laughs> and I think it. I think it was Pat that's been saying this, Crane, Pat Crane. That, but it's like I'm not big on him at this price. But I don't want. I don't want to be a zero on him. Mm. And I don't want to pay when he gets more expensive. So it's like I'd rather get some exposure here because I think he's going to get more as we get into these other contests. That he's going to keep rising as more hype does. Okay. All right. It's possible. Cool. Yeah. We'll bring we'll bring back into the stage before we hit Steph's. Do we Steph, know who? Because uh, I I jumped players. into this late. Who is Steph baiting in the first round to get Tyreek Hill so high? We're gonna we're gonna jump into her exposures when she comes back. Uh, okay. and we'll be able to see her first round, her first round exposures. Okay, so I didn't miss that. Okay, I'm no, confused not yet. at her top people. Derek Henry, I liked at this ADP too. So like this one kind of stinks, which is you know it, it sort of is what it is. The thing is, I know why. I know why I have such little Henry. It's five percent, like whatever. Aaron Jones, <laughs> we were we were clicking Aaron Jones a lot, and now you look where Jacobs goes who, yeah, sure, a little more of a workhorse prototype versus Aaron Jones, but you see where he rose to. So, like, Aaron Jones was clearly too cheap. Like, we yeah. just saw the rise that Jacobs got. Like, So at the time, Aaron Jones was someone that we were clicking early and often, and he ends up being like a – I don't even think it's a small miss, though. Who's backing him up? Ty Chandler in Minnesota? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> His current ADP is like 70. I, I kind of like him in that range still. <clears throat> The week 17 matchup versus Green Bay, too. You got the revenge game. Damn, that'd be insane. Samir White, I still think this is a team that touches at running back. So, man, the current ADP of 99 just, ah, it's hard to swallow for me. Hard to I swallow. love Samir White. I will say, do you think under, they touch at running back in the draft? Is that what you're worried about? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's the thought. Under big hits, there should be an Eckler fade here of under 1% and a Tajay Spears. We had, I think, one share through 112 drafts, and then the news came out that Pollard goes to Tennessee, and now we're getting, you know, we're getting our Spears exposure at 117 ish now, which I'm comfortable with. I, I think I clicked them about four or five times. But uh, those are some fades that, that we really that we've really hit on, and they were ranked red early in the draft guide as well. Kamara, leveraging this with Kendra, Chubb, leveraging this with Ford, but it looks like they reworked the Chubb deal, so he's going to be a Brown. I don't think the Ford click is still overly bad. If we think early season, the way you're drafting him and utilizing him, if the team is giving Ford a larger role, Maybe you're bringing in like Jonathan Brooks or like players like J.K. Dobbins uh, that are going to have maybe limited roles early or their slow starts. I, I think having Ford on those teams still makes sense. I haven't been what? doing much Ford. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I mean, yeah, he's one I haven't been able to come around to. He's probably going to fall too because of that Chubb news. A little more certainty that he's going to be returning. White is someone yeah. who I'm clicking now on the back end. Just like the receivers are being pushed up, the tight ends are being pushed up. Uh, I'm coming around to the Ford, uh, the white click, and then, yeah, Montgomery. I just think Gibbs towards the end of the season is just going to have the majority of the workload. Flowers, I think, is interesting. Flowers, to me, goes too early unless you have Lamar Jackson. I think this three percent is basically strictly with Lamar Jackson, or he fell. 10 plus picks. Yeah, which he has done a good amount. I just don't. Uh, your don't faith like list is so much shorter than mine. Mine's like a page long. Well, Tajay Spears, Tajay Spears should definitely be in here. There's probably a couple more, but also, I, I, can't, can't gathering like data. I did mine first, then Pat's, mm-hmm. uh, then Nick's, then yours, Drew, then Steph's. And uh, like, so you were good as I was getting, got to mine. <laughs> I was getting better at it as it went on. So like I also didn't do the uh big hits and big misses because it was like too hard to like I was like, well, if this person has a fade on it, I like, started to overthink it. I was like, if this person has a fade on this person, it's not a miss because they're fading mm. that intentionally. So yeah. like I just Fair dropped enough. that and was like, okay, we're just gonna do fades. Like Jordan Love could be on this list. I have sixteen dollars total through 176 drafts on Jordan Love. He <clears throat> He's definitely someone that could be yeah, on the list. Uh, Russell Love Wilson, is on my 2%. list. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's so we'll uh we'll bring Steph back in and I'll I'll pop out. But, you, can, uh, you can balance me out. You right, leave the Drew. star of the show we're on. Bouncing, we're bouncing Good <laughs> oh man, and he gone. He gone. All right. Steph. Wow. What's up? Well, Devontae Walker at the tippity top. 99% of Steph's teams have at least one rookie which is fun to see we were at 98 percent, so you beat us congrats i think i can remember like one team without a rookie that's hilarious. <laughs> that's hilarious i i feel like it is pretty memorable it's probably early into the season too the draft season i would think but uh yeah it's i, th- I think that's where my two percent came from at least tell me about walker I mean, it's not anything that, like, I love him so much. It's just that I think where he goes is too late. Okay. Comparison. I mean, he, he should get decent capital. There's a lot of questions still in his profile, but, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, he's should go, I think, day two. He, he crushed so, the combine, right? Like, yeah. He crushed he the combine. Had, I mean, he's had some a lot of buzz. Like I said, I mean, there's some questions just kind of, like there's a lot of guys in that range, but he is going like 190, something like that. Like, mm-hmm. it's like, I sit there and stare at him where I'm like, okay, I would take the, like, it's just a point where I would take him over guys and I'll pass on him and then I'll pass on him. And then he comes back to me like the third time. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm clicking him again. <laughs> I gotta do it. I gotta do <laughs> Cause I'll be like, I know I have too much. Him and like Roman Wilson's another one lately, like just where he's going. It's just like, I'm like, okay, I don't get it. Uh, so we we have four rookies as your top four receivers. It's not. I'm really surprised Thrashes. I haven't taken him in a while. He was more of an okay. earlier. Yeah, he had some buzz early and then sort of faded away. And then Nick yeah, Miller, and, and then I didn't Malik take Washington Mc, and uh, Javon McMillan. Baker. I still take. I mean, I I think he's still going way too late for his possible role. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean all all the Washington guys you know i mean they're obviously in, on that team and he's been moving up though i keep getting sniped on him yeah i i have more him him and uh burton seem to go and i get sniped on him um i've been high on baker the whole way he's got some good upside you were kind of mentioning him earlier hmm. uh roman and- wilson i'm very glad to to see the roman wilson click for a second i was like was that russ no can't no, no, no. Roman, Roman, Roman. <laughs> Let's get looking at wide receivers. No. Russell, Russell. I, right. I, I mean, Locked I mean, out. his his Locked team off. share that last like was just ridiculous, and then he's had you know he, he's been showing out at, at you know on everything on his pro days, and he, yeah. he's a 
he's ridiculous. I think he uh, has a lot of upside. I mean, all these guys have question marks, but I mean, I still think they're going to get decent draft capital and all these rookies are going to rise as soon as they actually get a landing spot and people can associate something with them. Like we're going to see right. in big board. And like you're what, you're investing, what you're investing here isn't a ton. Now you are mixing in like two, three of these guys, I'm sure. Yeah. But uh, I, th I think it's a good gamble to make at the receiver position this year. Um, 20 uh, round. I mean, I mean, that's where our edge is in these drafts early. It's this uncertainty of these rookies. I don't want to take guys that I know have a low ceiling. Right. Tyler Boyd. Bunch of Tyler Boyds at the end of the draft. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they could get a spot. But it's like we know what they are. We don't have – there's nothing in that box. And mm -hmm. a lot of these situations are going to change too. You know, guys that are, you know, the third or fourth option, they're going to hit the draft and then they're not even going to be the third or fourth option anymore. It's surprising. So your average ADP that you got Hopkins is 74.5. He's currently at 75.9. Is this surprising as in fallen more with the Ridley news? Uh, yes and no. It seems like a lot of news for some reason, guys fall slower than they rise. I've noticed. Mm. Like, I mean, it's kind of a similar thing with like, sure. even like I was taking a lot of like DJ Moore and, uh, Keenan Allen earlier on until Keenan went to the Bears, but their ADPs weren't changing. Like I would have kept taking them if they both dropped, but they really didn't for a right. long time. And that's where my exposures dropped on them. I know when we were talking about the Bears earlier, it's not that I was like off the team. It was just once both of them are going, I was like, okay, mm -hmm. it's going to be hard to for me to see them necessarily both hitting their ceiling. And then we got the tight end and it's a rookie quarterback, no matter how great we think he is, mm -hmm. we don't know how good they could be. And then we got all those running backs, just a lot of mouths to feed there. And then the price wasn't giving me any kind of discount. Um, it, lastly, like you smoked it on Pearsall. I love to see this. Well, I love Pearsall. Pearsall yeah, he's average ADP one. of 192.4. He's probably still could rise a little bit too. Um, obviously the landing spot can rise any of these guys, but I think the current bet of where he goes right now, I'm still selecting him a little bit before ADP. Yeah, but definitely I'm not pounding it like I was because I don't have to. Got to pound. Uh, okay. running, running backs, Warren at 32%. 30. I have a problem. This was like last year too. Last year all over because, okay, look, when you have – backfields and it's kind of for both guys here where the way more talented guy or the guy that had at least way better numbers last season and i mean with warren it's a no doubt more talented in my opinion we can argue about javante you know coming off the injury but you know was the better running back and then also happens to be the cheaper one i'm going to take that all day on teams that i think are going to run the ball a lot like why not for where they're going it's like these guys were killing it. And yeah, I like the, Bulger Steelers running back. That it, same not very good. <laughs> yeah. Give me both of them because I, I don't know what they're going to do. But uh, I like the Warren pick. I think I'm at like 12%, 13% maybe, 14%. So, yeah, I like it. I mean, I take, I, I mean, I do take some Najee. It's not yeah, like I'm fading I mean, him. But at the same, same and I'll bet, take them right? together too. Yeah. Because Najee's proven he can carry a load at, you know, at worst. Uh, what like, was that, Ben? I said I'm at 10 and 10. I just split a bit. Yeah, I but, like that. Also, a lot of it's bill dependent. You know, I do a lot of zero RB teams, so this is about where I start taking running backs, and those yeah. are the guys on the top of the list where I start taking them. So, you know, it kind of feeds into that and makes a lot of sense. I would probably lean Warren more if I could, but I seem to be seeing like Najee will. I know he goes above. He has a higher ADP, but he's always there when Warren is taken earlier. In my yeah, it does seem almost half and half. That Warren goes first, right? They've so. been they've been getting close. Their ADPs have been getting closer. It used to be a little bit bigger gap for yeah. sure. And then I was been, slamming Warren. Been, I was I was like yeah. you when when there was a significant gap. I was like, I had a significant amount of Warren. Uh, yeah. 
And now that they're right next to each other, it's like, I don't freaking know. I agree with you. I think Warren's a little bit better, but I don't think Najee's just like a bum and he's proven what he can do, right? Um, which is carry a load, uh, whether it's, you know, good or not. Well, I think Arthur Smith's going to use both of them. So, I mean, as long as they're both in there, like, I mean, last year I was hard fading Najee, but that was based on where he was going. Now where he's going is a reasonable price. So, like I said, I do take him too. And I'll take them together because I think they're going to run the ball a lot. I mean, that offense could pay off. I think the other as far as I'm running not, backs, the reason I'm not so overweight on them is because uh, they're going where Kyler Murray has been going. Are you slamming uh, Kyler? I'm slamming Kyler because awesome. I think if, like, I mean, when the Cardinals draft a wide receiver, whether it's Harrison or Neighbors, Kyler's price is going up. Oh, I, yeah. I do mock, like Kyler. Cardinals weren't taking one though. They traded down like twice, and I was like, "What are we doing?" This because I am the same. I have a bunch of Kyler, but yeah, it was a doomsday mock. It was like they <laughs> wound up with some like defensive end. I'll have to try to find it. It, it was nuts. So I was like, "If they do, this, don't let, Cardinals you don't have got to be rioting." <laughs> multiple generational wide receiver talents. You're at the number four pick with three quarterbacks expected to go above you. You don't let Marquise Brown walk to trade down and get not get a wide receiver. Like, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. None of that. But it's a deep class. I mean, they're still possible that they are yeah, given yeah. an offer that they can't refuse. But I'm the same way. I mean, and I take a ton of Marvin Harris. My thing with quarterbacks is I'll push it. Like I'll be like, yeah. oh, I have the I have the receiver. Let me push it a little bit, and then if I lose, because a lot of times I have more than one option. So I'm like. I don't go all in like we're, oh, I have to have Kyler. Like I don't get set on one person. So I uh, okay. usually if I have a few options, so I'm like, I'll push it around and then eh, I may lose them. So that's probably why you don't see my exposures is quite as high on some of those guys. Especially well, in lower stakes, especially in lower stakes, pushing the QBs. But even in higher stakes, if you get a room that you're confident <laughs> that everyone's going to stay in their lane and they're not going to yeah. go like naked Dak or uh, naked Poss, uh, pocket passing QB you can you can do it at higher stakes as well it just depends on what your comfortability level is but I like your exposures to your running backs and McLaughlin I get it I like the click but I just find myself waiting around and getting Tyler Algier very often and you're very old. She just does both. For it, well, lately, lately, I've been taking less McLaughlin because of he's risen and he's going more and he is so close to Algier. I do take Algier a lot. I have Algier ranked ahead of ADP. So he's pretty much, as soon as McLaughlin's gone, he's the next guy on my list. Mm -hmm. I have them back to back. Canada almost 20% is sick. Like, that's dope. I like yeah. that. Yeah, you know, like I, I, I wish I had twenty percent HM. That's I love this. I, 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 I mean, HM is. I mean, his upside is ridiculous. I mean, he's got to layer him game. right. It's, yeah, exactly. He is what I got shoved down my throat for two years about Chase Claypool, Christian Watson. No, it's Devin Achan. That's the guy that you guys have all been telling me to draft. It's him. Uh, I was on him, him last year. Yeah, like, too. I, like, I was on him early. Like, when people were still scared, they were too small and stuff. I was like, nah, this dude is... I was on him like, just because I, I was, I was a believer. Oscar, I was like, so. nope. Oh, I was on both of them. I was just taking, yeah. I'm like, taking anything Miami, basically. So moving on to Steph's QBs, <clears throat> May at twenty three percent. Are you drafting? Are, are you drafting as if he's going to Washington? Or where Where's the landing spot? Ideal landing spot for your exposures? Ideally, Minnesota would like to trade. No, it has nothing to do with my stacking. That would be my ideal area. But um, yeah, obviously I want Washington, Washington, and I don't want New England, but. <laughs> New England's starting to scare me a little bit leading the charge. But, I mean, I think that he's still got an underrating rushing upside that I'm hoping he can overcome. Or maybe that they get a better receiving room. I don't know. I'm trying to tell myself a story here. I do like him in general for fantasy. I mean, he can yeah. pass deep. He's very yeah. mobile. He can rush yeah. for touchdowns. He's a good size. I really like me. I really want he him goes, to work out. He goes at but, pick 150. <laughs> and yeah. all those things. Right. And he goes that much later than the other guys. Like there should not be that type of gap. 
is basically what yeah. it is between He's my highest all the rookies. Too. Um, right yeah. there with you, Steph. And Purdy is just because I end up usually – getting a lot of 49ers at some point earlier just because yeah, of where they all go. Was, so, was so I mean, I'm a stacker. I, I, I tend to stack things. So a lot of, you'll see, I have a really big Kittle, I think, uh, exposure. So that's probably where a lot of Purdy comes from, whether he's my first or second tight end. I take, I do a lot of double, double leaps yeah. and sometimes Kittle. Kittle's my second. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, they, like I said, I think they all go too late. Makes a lot of sense. Um, oh, also missing from my fades is definitely Mahomes and Kelsey. And especially early. Now where they're they're both kind of fallen to a pretty comfortable spot. I've been sort of mixing them in, but you're right at field, which I don't blame you, especially on on an elite QB like Mahomes. He it looks like the team's working with him. They bring in Marquise Brown, who is probably MVS 2.0. Um I think he's a little better. 2.50. He, he I mean, he was only, I mean, he had a thousand more receipt or passing yards the year before. I don't, it's not going to yeah. take much. I don't think you realize, I don't think you realize how bad, not just MBS, like the entire room. Like if you read my Rashi Rice article mm -hmm. and I went through like their PFF grades and stuff, like, I mean, they were all in the, like, they were the, like literally the last guys on the list. Like you had to oh. keep refreshing, refreshing, was, like his entire. It was bad. It was like it was horrible. Terrible. And he's still like, so it doesn't take much to get his efficiency up in that offensive ball. I mean, and they still won the Super Bowl. But so I had a huge fade on Mahomes and Kelsey last year. So I think coming into this year and trying to be unbiased with that take, I I don't mind. Like being at field, I think is super safe. Um but he's like going the fourth person. round. Right. Yeah, he I'm plays, like, he's he I mean, we were now. he's a four, first round guy. Yeah. Is a lot better. Uh, when he opened up, he was going. He was going earlier, and we had both. We had both Casey guys ranked in the red. Now, now we're starting to mix them in. Especially now, we're seeing them bring in weapons for Mahomes. I think it's, I think it's uh, at least a good sign for Patty. Kelsey sort of similar take for Tyree Kill though. Is like the snap count sort of coming down towards the end of the season, saving them for playoffs. So that's that's sort of where that take come from. But well, I do agree that they could. But I think he can still smash. I, yeah. I think he can still Definitely. see enough Definitely. for where he's going now. Again, it's not a first round pick anymore. Yeah. And it's tight end position too. So it doesn't take a whole exactly. lot for, for them to get there. And his single game ceiling is still there, even if he is playing 70, 60% of the snaps. So you, and, you, and you can still get him. Definitely is like one thing that I'm going to change about the next drafts is uh, I'm going to be drafting a lot more Chiefs like moving mm -hmm. forward. Because Kansas City was a bottom five for all of our combined data. Kansas City was a bottom five drafted team. That makes no sense. <laughs> I'm like, if there are sharp people out there that are fading Kansas City, how do I get an edge on them? I'm going to draft Kansas City. I also take a lot of Kelsey first, and I was taking right. I was doing Kelsey Rice before Rice was falling to the levels we're seeing now. Because then I was assuming there was smart people in my room that didn't want Nick and Mahomes to that point. So I was getting him late when I was taking him a lot of times. I was pushing him quite a bit past ADP by taking the other guys at their ADP. But I, I like the QB exposures. And getting the triple stacks. I like Hurts. I think, I think the QB exposures are pretty sharp. Really do. No, yeah, like, again, super high. May is the biggest stand, obviously, and then the next one drops off. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty even. Right, you're you're correlating. That's sort of what these exposures yeah. tell me. Yeah, I correlate, or I and I take a lot of like a guy early and a guy late, mm -hmm. and you know, I kind of told you, like you see Derek Carr's with my John, John, like that's just like my late safety net of okay, because I'll push things. Mm -hmm. Tight ends: Sanders, Juwan Johnson, which now that makes sense with your take there from earlier Kittle at 17% pairing that with Purdy, who's your second highest owned QB um, Bowers, Andrew. So you're, you're definitely going elite and you said sometimes double elite tight ends. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. I, I, I the like the let, I mean, they're letting you. What's the earliest that you're hitting the double elite? Like, is it, Oh, is I've, it hit, I've hit it ridiculously. It depends. Usually it's when they fall. Mm-hmm. 
Like it's when I get a deal, like I don't go into a draft going, oh, I'm going to do this one, you know, double late. But sometimes guys will just fall. And it's like if I get, I mean, I've done it with Kelsey Andrews. I mean, I've done it some early, early. Like sometimes I've gotten a 10 pick fall on those, on both of them. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay. I mean, I have one, but I'm like, if you're going to give this to me, because a lot of rooms, it's like they don't punish you that much. I mean, I still like my mm-hmm. running backs when I start in round nine or 10 all the time. Mm-hmm. So, that, I mean, I've been able to get double late quarterback, double late tight end for wide receivers and then pound running back and still like my teams. Fine. Like, t- like the rooms are letting you do that right now. It's not like you're having this, you know, either or type thing or, you know, you're going to hate your team over it. Like that, cause that's what it was last year. It's like people are taking those elite quarterbacks or double elite quarterback teams. And then their wide receiver room was just ridiculously weak. Right. It may not last. I don't think it will last in the BBM, but for right now, I'm taking advantage. I can't. True. Anything stick out to you on this exposure list? Um, me and Steph are just built different. Um, she she does a lot. We know of, that. Uh, we know that zero RB, uh, elite tight end, and I'm like the opposite. I like having a couple running backs. Doesn't have to be the first two rounds, but somewhat early. Um, and I don't like full fade tight end. I, and I do have like some of Kincaid. I'm a kind of a Utes fan. So, so here's, here's Drew's that. exposures. Um, see so like Bowers, uh, like I have some, but my pocket is kind of that, uh, Schultz and Joku. And, mm. uh, Surprise I've even been clicking, uh, um, um, brain fart, Dallas dude, Ferguson. Recently, Fergie Ferg. Yeah, I started. I, 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 I take that whole pocket. That's about like where I like to end, ideally, if I can. See, and I'm usually usually starting there, and you know, snagging three. Copy. Yeah. No, I I still like I still like these exposures. Uh, the pits. Are you are you clicking pits right now after Cousins? Is this? Were you catching up, or are you just like I missed the train? Like just waving Both. at it, like. I'm just gonna play it. it goes off the rails. I'm just trying basically it's not a purposeful fade by any means. Right. It's right. like I'm just trying not to go overboard reaching because I mm-hmm. still think there's guys that I'm like, eh, I don't know if he should be going ahead of him. Like I'll take him at ADP if he's there, but a lot of times he's not reaching ADP where I'm right. at. And and, and, just, and other guys are still on the board. And, where I'm like, you know, and your average ADP is 78, which is still really good, even though he was going probably near like pick a hundred, I think to start 78 is still really good for an average. Yeah. Like, I mean, like I said, he's definitely, I'm still in on Atlanta. I, I, I okay. mean, I was a huge, trust me. I, I tell myself, so I don't go like overboard. Cause I was mm-hmm. like the biggest pit stand ever for a while and had like a serious recovery. Serious so problem. I mean, I, I, we, we don't have to bring him up anymore. We don't have to bring yeah. him up. Yeah. New contest. My, my ex, my ex. Yeah. We're, 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 not gonna talk about him anymore. In a new contest, Pitts at pick sixty four. You drafting him there? Will you be over or underexposed? I'll be at least even. Drew, he's moving the eyebrows. I don't know. I'm struggling with the Falcons in general. We're putting a lot of trust in a Kirk Cousins <laughs> yeah, coming back are. from a torn Achilles, um, and these guys just all taking steps. Right, like they've all been good, but none of them have been great so we're like all right let's throw an old quarterback with a blown achilles on a team with a new coach and a bunch of good weapons and let's shoot them all up you know 30 picks in adp 20 picks in adp however far we're we're gonna shoot them up what what could go wrong i'm just gonna keep clicking evans after drake london and feel really good about it because he's gonna outscore him and I'll laugh at everyone. Hey, I'll I'll that. I put I'll it on that. the board. I'll take that. I'll take I'll that. Okay. I'll Evans that. over London. Double board board bet. Whatever you want. But oh, you guys name here. the price. Put it in there. Okay. Right, a keg of beer, right, a 30 Pickles. pack of beer. Is, <laughs> is, is this <laughs> is this imported beer? Are we talking Bud Bud Light? Like, I got you. Whatever. This is actually but fun. Yeah, Steph's not, not here to defend herself now. Oh, she's <laughs> knocking. She's oh, knocking no. on the door. Well, we couldn't hear you before. You're back. 
I'm more worried about Pitt's health, possibly, than Kirk's health. Damn. 2x that now. It's the year of the zero Achilles. It's, it's Not really... an Achilles for Pitts, but it was an MCL and some right, other but... stuff, possibly more than what we thought that could have been affecting his last season. And I'm not 100% sure how much he's over it. Right. Where I'm pretty sure that Kirk's going to be fine coming, well, good enough coming off, as good as you can be coming off an Achilles for an immobile passer. At that age, Cousins, Rogers, J.K. Dobbs, who needs an Achilles? Uh, Steph's team exposures. This is very surprising. 17% Cardinals, very low on Connor, very low on Marvin Harrison Jr., I'm assuming, which is, uh, which is fine. It's Marvin Harrison. No, I'm not low on him. I have a ridiculous amount. I don't know. That's where it has to be coming from. He, he, he gets counted as a rookie. So, like, all the rookies don't get counted on those presumed teams. So, Caleb Williams isn't a bear. Uh, right. Don't We can't assume. That's the thing. Caleb is the oh. only, I think Caleb I'm sorry. <laughs> is really the only player we can clearly say, like, this is going to happen. I think everything else, could there be a trade at two? I just I, met I, for I, my exposures, and then you, yeah. I realized that you're right, and that can't count. So now I'm trying to figure out, it's just it's got to be Trey McBride that's driving Trey that McBride. up. Which 17% is low, in my opinion. It's very low. 17% so, is very low. Well, I try. Like, other people try James to take Connor? it. Are you fading yeah. James Conner? Are you fading Not Tyler? on purpose. No, but if I don't, I, I get sniped on him all the time. Mm -hmm. So, again, it's not always purposeful. It's that I told you, like, earlier when I push it. I don't make it a priority on the quarterbacks right. in general. Broncos, this has to be the Julio McLaughlin. I'm guessing you're mixing that, in some yeah. mims. A little bit of mims. Okay. Like, as much as I love him, I've. Taylor, I mean, I do still have realistic expectations, but no, it's definitely the Jaleel. I do have still a good bit of, no, I still have a lot of Javante. I mean, okay. a good bit. I do take both. Fading time Pittman? Time. Nowhere near Pitt as much. Is this the Pittman fade? Josh yeah. Downs fade? Are you still going a No, I want to, but I get sniped on him. Like, I cannot land him. Like, I've been, he's, him and Lamar, like, I every draft I go in, I try to get them, and I can't. Like, the same way. It, it, it's a joke. Actually. I take a lot of downs, actually, so I'm surprised it's quite that low. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, Pittman, is. Pittman's like an almost total fade, so I'm not that surprised. Everything else is very balanced. Actually, Steph's highest exposed team is 49% and lowest is 16%. If we go to mine, because I think I have a crazy one because of free agency, uh, 62, what's my lowest? 14% with the Chargers. I'll take that. I'll take that all day. Uh, let's let's get to the first round exposures for Steph, and then we'll we'll uh, go over to Ben's exposures. CMC at 8%, Lamb at 7 which you can't control those two. Hill at 16%. So he's been your clear number three all offseason. Are you selecting him at two ever? No. Okay. I'll take him at three, okay. though. Okay. Uh, Jefferson, Bijan, Brees Hall, and then you have twelve percent Amonra. Are you going Amonra over Brees or Bijan? I had no Amonra at all until like maybe like till not very long ago. Then it was like totally just draft picks where I where I was getting my picks at. Like I wasn't purposefully fading him. No, I don't take him usually over the running backs because I'm pretty low, like exposure wise. I do try to, in general, keep my first round exposures pretty balanced. Mm -hmm. So I take guys close to where their ADP is because it's like when you get those spots, you just kind of get them. So it's not that I'm, I'm not taking Amon Ra over them. It's just that all of a sudden I got like an influx of those picks. Copy. And we're very similar with Garrett Wilson on the back end at 13%. And if we think about when the contest opened, you had JT and Kyron, or maybe just Kyron, in the top 12 going before Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson wasn't even in the first round. Uh, were you high on Garrett Wilson from the start, kind of bringing him into the first round? Yeah, that's how I ended up with the 14% as well. Are you going Garrett Wilson over AJ Brown? No. Okay. I have AJ Brown still usually over Garrett Wilson, but I had a lot of picks in 11, 12 where I was getting them both together. You're drafting a ton on the back end here, as we can yeah. see. 
That's what I was like most. Yeah. <laughs> surprise, surprise. It's like, seems like every year. <laughs> you're saving the good luck, the good variants for BBM. That's and then there was, and, and some of the Hill thing was like, I'd actually, it was funny. Cause it's like, I would go in and go, okay, I know I'm really low on Brees. I know I'm really low on B. Like I was like actively wanting to get them. And then I'd have Hill fall to like five or six or seven. Like I had that happen several drafts where I was like, actively targeting someone else and he uh, like just fell this ridiculous amount i'm like I okay frozen. i have to like i'm not gonna not we could hear you take him here <laughs> that's fair that's fair i i i like how you're balanced between these players i have a tough time bringing in gibbs i think where, where was i at on gibbs i was i'm at six percent so i'm mixing him in but gibbs i like the end of season I like the end of season upside on Gibbs, but Monty still being there for that touchdown goal line rolls. It does kind of freak me out as a advance rate play. I, I know he's a great upside play Gibbs, but advance rate. I don't know if he's going to be able to pay out pick 11 with Monty just kind of looming in that backfield. But yeah, now I, I, I take Wilson and AJ Brown over him. Got it. Perfect. That makes that so makes a ton sometimes of sense. I have him land later. That makes a ton of sense. Um, all right, let's switch over to Ben's. Ben with Ricky Pearsall at an average draft pick of 197.5, 31% of teams. You smashed this one, my friend. You smashed this one. Yeah, I was pretty happy about that one. But you hit some, you miss some. No, I'm just kidding. No, this is good. This is good. Uh, he's. I would love to see him on a team like Miami. Uh, Miami just seems like a really good, really fun fit for for Ricky. It seems like he could be used in like in movement, in motion. Especially after him working out with Waddle and Hill. That that video was ridiculous. That was stupid. <laughs> uh, cowing. <laughs> Dude from Cincy. How do you say his last name? I murk it every time. Cowing. No, no Yoshi Boss. Oh, Yoshi oh. Yeah. I was like, Cowing? I, I definitely <laughs> said, like, I was Savas. I definitely said that before in the past. Uh, Terry at 21%. Dude, Terry's ADP right now just seems so clickable. It's like at the end of a tier, there's like right before the wide receiver, you know, drop off. And I'm still like, I think I'm like at 9%, but his ADP just seems, it seems like there's a lot of uh, just value, potential value there. If we're assuming they're going to get a QB upgrade, sort of like what happened with Drake London. Um, sort of like what we assumed with DJ Moore, but then they brought in Keenan Allen. So that that hurt the value there. But if if they bring in like Drake May, did you Harry. see the latest rumor? What do we got? So I saw like right before I hopped on that somebody was saying, and I didn't get a chance to check who said this. So if it's anything legitimate, but that Ayuk is following the commanders and stop following the 49ers. That's fun. All I heard. Ew, like I said, I don't like 49ers. it for Ayuk. I actually hate, I would hate that one for you. <laughs> But I, well, I hate it more for Terry. <laughs> I mean, it depends where he goes. Oh, did where did is he going? Where I was the like no? Somebody said that he started how, following the Commanders. How far would Terry fall though? Like we we just saw Tennessee <laughs> Titans bring in Ridley, right? Hopkins falls. Uh, there's a big. Spots. I'm sorry. There's a big fucking difference between uh, Calvin Ridley and Brandon Ayuk. I mean, don't make me get my dynasty True. rankings out here and my age. Like, I mean, this but, is not even the same. But you have Levis too. You have Levis too. You have, you have the Titans. So it's like, it's also a, an offense that is like not a sexy landing well, spot. Okay. Neither offense is sexy. Right. Exactly. So we have similarities and there. Dan Quinn. There's only so many receivers that really go off, off the board after McLaurin though. Before Christian Watson, there's like. But, it, but McLaurin guys. did nothing for a long time. I mean, is he a trap? I don't know. I still take him. But Ma I still feel McLaurin that way every time I puts up like a thousand yards every year with whoever's throwing him the ball. He like has I could throw him the ball and he'd put up a thousand yards. Uh, <laughs> not last year. 
I got what you, you. He had to have been close. What do you get to? I'm talking. Maybe I'm talking out of my ass. I swear. He I'm looking. Hold on. My computer's being 1, slow. One thousand and two yards. Put it on Barely. the board. <laughs> Drew was Sam Howell. Drew like, was so confident. I was, but then she. I'm made surprised. Me, I, I'm not gonna lie. I, I well, I it, we were pretty. We were pretty there. close. I <laughs> yeah. mean, I, I didn't I get I my good. my computer is being like super slow. So no, I was I like, just feel like he is watching. He's like steady Eddie, man. Thousand yards. Well, he had score, he had the, the foot the injury too. Is good. Yeah, like if the offense is good, he'll he'll score touchdowns. If it's not, he's just gonna put up his thousand yards and however many catches. Oh, I, I believe he's good. Like, I think he's good. I just worry about the offense in general. But I'm worried if they bring in Brandon I, I <laughs> Well, Yeah. I think I use better at this point. But, uh, yeah. No, I like But he's Perry. way more I expensive. Solid. So, I, I think. Yeah. The Again, I have no idea how legitimate this is. I didn't check the source or anything. It's something I, like, literally saw out of, like, the corner of my eye five minutes yeah, before it. I hopped on. So I love it. it was a fun talk either way. Roman Wilson, very common denominator here amongst the first three pounders. Drew, you better not let us down when we get to your exposures. I swear to sweet. Oh, Lord no, I have Jesus. a good Roman Wilson, I think. I, I closed out all of my tabs out because I was lagging so bad. So I, just, I'm, I, I see what you see now. I have it here. I have it here. Yeah. He hangs at 19%. Javante... No, not Javante Williams. Is this JMO? JMO. Yeah. JMO at 19%. Sell me. Sell me JMO at pick. Where'd you get him on average? At 103. So you got about six and a half spots of closing line value. So he's playing a rookie season in his first two years, including the playoffs. He has played a rookie season. He has. Uh, 25 catches for like an average of like 32 yards or something absurd, 25 yards. Like his efficiency when he catches the ball is nuts. It's a completely single game ceiling play. When yeah. Goff can get him the ball. When Goff can get him the ball. <laughs> but San Francisco, one of the best defenses in the NFL, he had two touchdowns in the playoffs on the biggest stage. He can perform when the pressure's on. Uh, and He's played a rookie year. You look at all of his uh, college things, he, his college measurables are everything you want. Everything you're looking at for these rookies are like he checks every box. Mm. He feels Christian Watson-y to me, but he's – but he's – but – but I do click him every now and then. I don't have a full fade on him like Watson because mm. I, I think he's a little bit better at the game, and I really like the Lions. But he, he feels Christian Watson-y to me or like – yeah, you're gonna. You, well, you're hoping. I'm not gonna say you're gonna get because there's a chance you don't. But uh, you're hoping you get a couple big spike weeks out of him because you're mm -hmm. definitely not getting a weekly score. I wouldn't bet that you're gonna he also, use. He also wasn't in uh, as many wide receiver sets as you would think somebody with that high draft capital would be in. in his but first I think two that's years, partially. But what i'm saying i don't think he's the i think he's better than watson i just i think he's he's more athletic he's an athletic freak and he made college football his you know what yeah i'm just not sold in the nfl so when he's out there they're not targeting him he only has a 17 percent targets per hour run last year and his yards per hour run were only 1.47 which yeah. They, Isn't they, fabulous. Not, so, but the numbers are when he's out there, he's not doing anything. It's like I want to see him get targeted. I he should have an absurd targets per out run for a first round pick for what we want when he's going. And I know that earlier, I don't remember what it is, but I looked at like where he think he's just this deep threat, and he was used about half and half on deep and intermediate routes. And he wasn't rated that highly for how he's performing on either one of those. And his open score is pretty low as well. Like, yeah, I think he's just a big player. He does it, and he's not getting that much contested catches. Yeah, but he's not doing. He's not really getting those big plays. Like he's not making. No, them but he did it to a at a time where rate. everyone saw him do it. So it's he's hard. A couple for times, people to but not. as a first. But I mean, we're talking about a guy that was a first round pick. That's not yeah, living up to it. I mean, we can give him a little bit of a longer. He's twenty one. 
They're what does it matter where he was drafted, 22. though? We're not drafting him like he's a first-round pick anymore. No, but that matters about him. Their investment of getting him on the field, it still feels like, in general. Yeah. I mean, that's and how you kind like of they're go they're trying. Like it, but it, it hasn't like worked trying, at this point. But, yeah, it's like, ugh. It didn't work for Devontae does, Adams the first couple trying. of years. Okay, but that's an out. You can't sit there and rope everything into one outlier situation. Oh, no, sure, we can. This is best. best <laughs> I'm well, saying yeah, what well, I'm seeing argument, argument isn't, is. isn't showing because most because I could give you 20, 30 examples of guys that it didn't work for. That's one example of a guy that yeah. we, that my we see. And I mean, my argument isn't that he's going to be an alpha wide receiver. My argument is the depth chart's cleared up, he has shown that he can spike. He showed that on the biggest. Has stage, he so though? Has yes, he, he scored two touchdowns against San Francisco in the playoffs. That's one game. What? It's one game. That's he's played seventeen games. <laughs> he, I think, at price is a little expensive. I think the best argument for being for JMO is getting rid of Reynolds if they don't bring anyone else in, and that's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting to see if they bring someone else in. If they do, they probably aren't leaning into as much JMO being the number two clear guy. So right now, for my exposures, I'm currently waiting on JMO. I'm waiting to see what the team does. I think we can get a lot of information just by the draft, seeing what happens. I will say, he's not a full fake for me. I do take him correlated, but I don't want to be overexposed. That's fair. I'm, I'm very similar. I think with them not bringing anyone in during free agency, right now it's a good sign. And they get rid of Reynolds. Right now it's a good sign for JMO. And they didn't play DPJ at all last year, really, when they brought him in, who was a similar no. No. role. So that that was another – that would be something in the bullish. Yeah. Uh, anything Locks. else on this list? DJ Moore, obviously, before, um, before Keenan Allen gets there. It's a rough one. I was in a similar boat. Just because I like getting a receiver, especially at least one receiver, through two rounds and uh, a lot of drafts on the back end, and then going a lot of Bijan early, I was ending up with a lot of DJ more early. Uh, Palmer, I think at his ADP, especially early one fifty five, this is just a great advance rate click, and then you get the news that Keenan Allen's sailed off. At 139, if this was, if I was drafting like nothing but cash games, I would have Palmer on every single team. Every single team. I, I had a lot of Palmer too. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It felt gross, but I, I did it. <laughs> no. Re Keenan Allen news. The click was disgusting at ADP. I will say. I will say. Uh, Wandale, Dog, Will Marquise Brown, so you smash on this one, 40 picks, closing line value, your average you drafted Marquise Brown at was 100. Uh, that was a straight gamble. Wait, <laughs> when 100%. When the tournament opened, I was like, Marquise Brown is a chief. We're drafting him like he's a chief. Yeah. So who else do you see in your vision going to teams like the Bills? Because, <laughs> I mean, I'm maybe you have a gift here. <laughs> Damn. Neighbors, high on neighbors, high on Metcalf. I love the Metcalf ADP where he's at right now, 35. I'm not London. I, I was surprised I was that high on Metcalf. So you've stopped drafting London because of you smashing on early exposure, average draft pick of 41, which I think yeah. is is smart. Uh are you what where are you at in your drafts? How many are you through? I'm done. Okay. So you maxed. Mm -hmm. That's this sick. was like at 146. This mm -hmm. this exposure sheet. Javon Baker early on that scene as well. Two seventeen. Some people are reaching up before that. I think he's he's even higher than two seventeen right now. Reed at fifty three. Downs Pittman, pretty much pretty standard there. Um, I have a lot of a rich, so Those so correlating it there. I'm jealous. You'll you'll get more a rich. You'll get more. A I still take downs even if I don't have him. Like if I need a receiver in that range. But. I like that round that range that downs goes into. Uh, Chase Brown. Here's a here's a strong take. Is this all pre Zach Moss for the most part? No, I just, like Zach Moss flipping him doesn't make sense to me. 
I'm like, okay. <laughs> we know we've seen a lot of Zach Moss, and it's not that great. Like mm-hmm. he had, he did good at the beginning of last year, and then he fell off again. Uh, he got what eight million dollars for two years. Right, right. He, it was not a huge contract. It's not like they're and they can get out after one. So he got a one year deal. Likely. For Likely. That's I'm worried about him bringing in another guy, though. That's that's that would be my that, I'd be more concerned about that. <laughs> I, I look, Chase was my highest exposure last year. I still have a good bit. I like him, so I, I mean, I'm not going to talk down. But that's my concern. It's not yeah. as much moss as because I think even both of them could still hit in the backfield sharing it. But yeah. if they bring in a third person, then I'm worried. I also, uh, before any of the drafts started, I was looking at teams and I was like, which team do I want to be the highest exposed on? And Cincinnati was a fourth place team last year. So they're playing a fourth place schedule. I looked up like who they play against and like they're, I mean, I did this for every team, but like Cincinnati was like a glaring, like they're going to play a soft schedule. I'm going to be crazy high on all Cincinnati. So they're, they're my highest exposed team. So it's kind of across the board with Cincinnati. Copy. Making that bet that Burrow comes back, stays healthy, a lot of red zone trips, and Chase Brown does seem like the running back that has the highest upside, the most explosiveness, and it's basically, yeah, he's going right near the Tajay Spears range right now, but on supposedly, potentially, expectedly, a better offense than Cincy versus Tennessee. Mm -hmm. If Burrow stays healthy, that team's going on a rampage. I've said it on this stream, said it in the Discord. I want I'm I'm with you, Ben. I don't know where they rank again. I had to close my tab. I don't know where they rank on my thing. If I'm low on them, then I'm dumb. Um the Bengals. <laughs> yeah. I like them. Herbert, 19%. Rashawn Johnson, obviously we 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 both take an L there with Swift ending up there. Dowdle, I like this. Good closing line value there. Average pick of 190s at 165 right now. Ford. Uh, Moster, anyone else stick out to you? Here's some more good closing line value on Samir White, about 15, 16 picks. Marshawn Hoy, that's a good CLB too. I like Gibbs. Mm -hmm. Gibbs at 13%. Yeah, I'm not biased at all. Wow. (laughs) No. Arguing JMO, having a lot of Gibbs. Did you you get the Gibbs Amon Ross stack? Ever? No, I never did. I tried. Pat, this is who I was trying to find in the Discord, by the way. Trying to get oh, the, the lion stack. You found him. Yeah. Yeah. That, told you. I'm, su- I'm surprised. I'm not crazy. Like, I'm not crazy. If you draft enough on the back end, I feel like I've definitely seen it. I don't think I've ever it. seen it. I've seen it. Have. I've seen it. Uh, on to QBs. May, Murray, Richardson, Lamar Jackson, Caleb. I love through five, I love this exposure list. Then you get hit with Fields, which I'm in <laughs> a similar boat. Bomb. <laughs> Daniels, I like. Barrow, I think this is a really sharp group of QBs. Yeah, you you crush the quarterback exposures. Yeah, I just do they run? Click. <laughs> it's a simple game. It's a simple game. Do they run? Click. Click. Okay. Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> uh, like except it. for Fields. Or Hurt. Trademark it, Ben. Except for uh, Jared Hurts. Hurts. Was, uh, what Hurts happened? Was uh, Hurts was nothing against the player, nothing against the Eagles. Hurt, the way I see it, it's a 550-man file, and the way the Eagles lined up for the entire tournament was the easiest stack of like the top-end teams. And I was just like, I don't want to go up against 549 other teams that have the exact same stack as me, as if, if that's the one that gets in there. Mm-hmm. It's like, so that was just like, this isn't, this is more of like Fade a- Fade the easy elite stack. Right. That wasn't, and I still like- got I don't hate it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't hate it. If that stack sucks, you that's a nice little uh, advantage you got on the field. I think with the price of Allen going in the third, um, man, I, I do have, I am a little under on Hertz myself. 
I do like those like middle round QBs like Richardson, like Lamar. He's my second highest owned QB. I like this Kyler range as well. I wish I had 17%. Um, but yeah, I, based on price, I still like Hurts. I like, I want more of him, but, uh, when you can get Lamar Jackson, it's only a half round. I guess it's only a half round. I like them both. I like them both. Tight ends, Allen, Komet, Laporta. Allen had some steam early, and I didn't join that train. Um, I, I think I've mixed him in a little bit with the Staffy stacks, but... Is this someone that you were clicking later into the draft as well as early? Yeah, I clicked him throughout the whole thing. Okay. Uh, uh, I learned my lesson on Kyron last year with Sean McVay. Like, yeah. If he says he likes a guy, I'm like, okay, he likes him. <laughs> he said he likes top, the Top of the draft board. <laughs> like, <laughs> he said he likes Kyron. He said he likes David Allen. I'm like, all right, we're going to click David Allen. and <laughs> McVay likes him. You seem to like getting an elite guy. On yeah. each, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're, yeah, I agree with Steph. Like, the prices of them are just egregiously low. And, like, give me all of them. Which one's Bell? He's a rookie, right? He, I took Bell uh, earlier, but now he might be an H back, actually. So I've laid off. But it's funny because mm -hmm. your entire speech about McVay was exactly my mindset, too. I was like, oh, he likes him. I will take him. I don't need to know yeah. anything else about a guy. I was like, <laughs> so, was like him. You, yeah. you know, the coach speak index. Like, I don't know what it says on McVeigh, but I'm like, I feel like it's like a hundred percent when he says he likes a guy. Yeah. Are these your first? And, round and he wants to first? use one. Yeah, these are my first round exposures. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, so you, uh, you like your lions. Yeah. Oh yeah, we all, we talked about that. <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm okay with that. They're a top five a team. I I never drafted Lions like my entire life. I've been playing fantasy football for like 20 years. I've never drafted the Lions. I'm like they're good. I'm drafting I'm Lions. <laughs> like you were so excited. You're like finally, yeah, this is on. our time. <laughs> Who's your favorite Lion? Like what? It's not exposure wise, but like uh, I'm on the for. Line. Amon Ra, that's the, okay. Amon Ra's my favorite. Stud. Yeah. I like his podcast, too, with uh, Equanimaeus. I haven't heard it. I'm sure oh, the there's so many that's goddamn so podcasts mm -hmm. now. There's so many. So many. We're on a podcast. I, I know. <laughs> there's so many. Oh, okay. I still haven't heard the Kelsey's podcast. I mean. Dude, Ben's a massive spoon. How would you guys not say it yet? Massive spoon getting all the one on ones. Everyone's been looking for this guy. He's oh, wanted. I, <laughs> I didn't even look. at CMC because I'm thought, halfway through a bottle of wine, box. so and I had the mimosas earlier, so that's how I didn't notice. <laughs> so, what happens? You let me on at 10 30 at night, right? Two of my biggest right. boards are Strategic. CMC, too. <laughs> so, so my money is big on CMC. Damn, crazy! Went, That's crazy. I went the one hundred and one back to back. I was like, "Well, I guess we're gonna next, catch CMC both times." Next highest is Gibbs, and you're tied with Puka, Amonra, Chase at eleven. You're just under on, so you're staying around five percent plus. You have no like, you have no like hard fades here in the first round. No, I, I pretty much was like, I'm just gonna let the board dictate to me. Um, yeah. I set my rankings earlier. Uh, the only thing that I had that was like pretty much di different was uh, I had Amon Ra uh, above Brees, and that's because of like uh, I want to like the structure of wide receiver over running back, and then also the Jets just scare me. <laughs> like I said, and I, I and I took Amon Ra sometimes over the running backs. It just kind of depended on build wise. It wasn't necessarily a hard stance, but I, I mean I think that's fine. I don't have a problem with it. Big hits. Ricky, Roman, both rookies. Marquise Brown, free oh, yeah. agent. London, Pitts. Uh, White, Lloyd, Dowdle. Zach Mouse, 8%. Trey McBride. 
Big misses, Fields, I hear you. Khalil, Roshan, Joe Mixon for being under. Gus Edwards for being under. Jacobs, Henry, and Justice Hill having a little too much. Who could still have a role, sort of like Tajay Spears, I think, to start the year. But yeah, towards the end... I'm one of the biggest Justice Hill truthers for years now. I feel like like last year I was all on. Like I've been, I was writing him up in my, I've been taking him again a little bit, but I'm like, I think it might be over. Yeah, it's the Derek Henry nail in the coffin. I think Gus Edwards ended up with like 11 or, thir- 11 or 13 touchdowns last year in Baltimore. It seems like Henry, even though, Lamar's a Russian QB stealing rushing touchdowns. There's going to be so much work on the ground for Henry, especially in the red zone. Well, Henry doesn't have to get him close in either. Like he can run it. Right. right. Like he's still showing some juice. I can't wait. They don't have the season long pickums out yet, but the Derrick Henry line will be for touchdowns will be a fun one. I wonder what that's going to be at. Like I wouldn't be surprised if it was at like 11 and a half. I was going to say 10 and a half. So. Kamara, I don't know, but I feel like we need to be quiet or we're going to give them their lines. No. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Uh, Barkley, 5%. Yeah, so similar fades. Similar fade list here with Kamara, Chubb, White. Um, I'm, I'm there too. And now that free agency sort of over, like, I don't mind – White as much. I've been adding some more shares on the back end. At his well, well, there's still the draft. You do realize they're going to take somebody, oh, right? Yeah. And and yeah. he yeah. he can't rush. I mean, he can catch. His uh, same thing with James Cook, though. Like they've been trying to bring in a running back. They brought in three guys just last year. They brought in Damian Harris, Latavius Murray, and Old Man Lenny. Yeah, but they can still split. They, the they can one. still they can still split that backfield. I mean. Those two players, what they it's, have in it's common a is different. it's they have safe floors, and I think that's kind of why I'm I'm fading is because, especially in like the fourth round, we're not looking really for floor. I like James Cook a, little, a lot more than White myself, but I, I get I, what you're saying. I get I get it. And when you get rid of Diggs, I, I think you actually add a little more certainty to his pass catching role too for Cook. James yeah, Cook. for sure. Uh, I mean. I mean right. They've both had some uh, bad mistakes in important situations. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's pull up Drew's Expos here. And we're clicking the X on eeny, meeny, miny. Ben. (laughs) Ben's out for a sec. Drew, (laughs) I can't say I'm surprised. (laughs) I can't say I'm surprised to see God. On brand, baby. On brand. At least he's in oh, front of Christian Christ. Watson this year. I don't have to make that an argument anymore. Thank God. That's hilarious. I love yeah, that. that was annoying. 56% but, yeah. of your teams drafted have at least one buck on it. I'm actually surprised to see <laughs> right down here. Carolina is at 55% just under. I know. It, and it's like all their freaking running backs. Like the, I'm just clicking one of Chuba. Sanders yeah. and Chuba in okay. like every draft. So, okay. and Bryce, like I have some Bryce Young because as you see, I have a bajillion rookie wide receivers on my top own. Right. So like one of them's got to land with Bryce. Right? That's, that's kind of my thinking. I love the Chuba big. pick. Yeah. Thank you. I, I think I, we're all. I, I, I do. I do. Love Chuba. Chuba with the zero RB builds too. Yeah. So, he's I mean, a he, good zero RB. He's, yeah. a good, he's a good guy. Rome at 25%. Oh, wow. You have a hundred percent of your drafts have at least one rookie on them. Oh yeah, for sure. I I at least that. one. I would bet damn near a hundred percent of my drafts have two rook- rookies on them. Oh, You'd have to run yeah. the data, but yeah. I, like I, I said, I think I think rookies. I had one without a rookie that got yeah. me from ninety. I mean, look at all of them: McConkey, Baker, Washington. Roman, Xavier, 24% Keon. lad at an average age. I'm a little jealous game. on the McConkey because I was a little cautious of him coming in still, and now I'm a little higher on him. Now that seems like oh, he's securely getting had, the capital. But I, I mean, look. in my ear all offseason. Yeah, I but, but again, I look at production. Like, I look at 
the analysis, I look at other things and it's like, yes, I saw like, you know, his one, you know, his pro day and stuff and different things, but it's like, uh, I don't yeah. know. But then, he, he you know, now it starts, producer. you start to see yeah. all these things and I'm like, okay. And now that you think he's getting the capital and, you know, mm -hmm. it seems like all the sharps are in on him and it's like, okay, I'm a little more confident and his route That's running looks pretty fucking good. And nah, it's, nah. it's the he's, gamble. He's it, it's disgusting. I don't think you want to be under on a guy that has the chance to go at the end of the first. I've round. seen him. Well, okay. we didn't know he's that then. Time. Now that we know time. that I don't want to be under on it. Adam, then we didn't have a clue. Adam, yeah. Yeah. Adam yeah, Adam's that. been telling us that since freaking November. <laughs> Where's my lad at? Because I don't think I, I have, I as have much a lad good bit of lad. You like I've caught Kelly. up. I have fifteen percent. I've caught up, but I don't have that level. Javon Baker, another I one in the Adam. league. So going a lot with the the late rookie receivers, which we see a common common theme there between the Pounders. Uh, Higgins, Waddle. I like the Waddle click. I like the I'm Waddle big on, I'm, I'm with you. I'm big on Waddle, too. I take him yeah. ahead of ADP all the time. I'm, I don't yeah. know Every time I'm in a draft with you, Pat, I know that it, like, I'm, gonna, fight over I'm like, shit. And what's, what's funny is because you are actually so overexposed to Hill, too. So you're very ex overexposed to Miami. You have 16% Tyreek Hill. It's... and it, Well, I mean, come on. Did you not watch last year? They did pretty yeah. fucking good. I have yeah. no problem and, taking And both. they like to throw it to <laughs> two people. Like, there's two people. That they it's like a concentrated people. offense. You say you're, you say like you're Dallas fan. Uh, Mike uh, Evans I, I, at 21%. I'm unbiased when it comes to fantasy. Same. I love that. Yes. Drew, I, however, I, Drew, however, can, <laughs> 31% of, uh, of Godwin here and then 21% Mike Evans the it goal is, is to have 50% of my teams <laughs> having a buck. God Nick, winning. welcome to the live stream just What's in up, time. Nick? Oh, that that's headset okay. definitely not working yet. We got some technical difficulties there. He, I'm sure he'll uh, he'll figure them out. <laughs> that sounded like a get giant the, fart. Get, get the team on it. Get the team <laughs> on it. Roman Wilson, another one worthy at 20%. Coleman, Mitchell. Very heavy on the rookie wide receivers. Yeah. And this will change, you know, moving in future contests. But the mm -hmm. big board, get your guys. Rookies are a pretty safe bet. Um, but they're not all going to smash their ADP. But a lot of these guys are still going to move up after they get drafted, even though we know that they're going first round, second round. I know that doesn't matter for this contest. But uh, no, I just – I prefer – We've talked about it a few times. I prefer the upside. Um, they have a higher bust rate, but who the hell cares when you're taking them in the teen rounds? Like, right. I want as many bullets at the Puka's a dumb we example. Came here to example. Game. Yeah, yeah. Like, we I don't came, want it is a dumb Adam Thielen. Like, why is Adam Thielen? I, I don't want him. I, we saw his peak in Carolina, it was good for a couple weeks. And then he was shit. And he so, went back to Adam um, Thielen. <laughs> yeah, like why are we? I don't. I don't know. So that's been my thing. Um, and as rookies move up, I just find other rookies late that I still like and keep clicking them. Johnny Wilson's a fun twentieth rounder now. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, he's another like, one that's. There's always twentieth round rookies that you can find that uh, are Taj, better. Taj Washington, uh, maybe like a little more diamond in the rough. Uh, I've clicked less, him a few because well of you. Known. Right. Yeah. Let's see if Nick's got his stuff working. Nick, you, you, are you with us? What's up, friends? <laughs> oh, welcome to the live stream. We officially have five, five, five guests, including myself. I'm a guest on my own to show keep tonight. Up the uh, Undertaker theme song and come in with like you know a cool <laughs> entrance, but it didn't work. Sorry. It failed. It failed. <laughs> nice. So we actually get to talk about Drew's exposures behind his back now. And he cannot defend himself, which is best case scenario. <laughs> Anyone on this list surprise you for running backs, guys? Uh, what's the uh, line? What's for it? me. Okay. That's true. I, 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 I,
I'm not a big fan of Javante, but at least it makes sense. Like Mitchell at 20% doesn't, doesn't Mitchell? make sense. There's like, I don't, yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, not, being at the field, I think for like a handcuff, I don't know why you would want to be 20% on a handcuff. But at least with Mitchell, you know what he is. So, you know, he is an elite handcuff. And mm -hmm. with at least Javante, that's like a running back room that for me, like it, I haven't figured out yet between Javante, McLaughlin, like, so that's where I'm at between those two. You're hoping he's an elite handcuff. Is right. it fully certain that he is like the workhorse if CMC goes down? It's, it's still it would have to be. Who else is there? They could bring someone in. I just – the limited role that they gave him last year, some games not touching the ball a single time, is a little worrisome. It's a little worrisome. Well, um, he does it – he, he has a huge exposures on a lot of handcuffs too, like Sanders. Yeah, so probably drafting a lot of zero RB type teams is yeah. what I'm assuming here. Um, getting some nice closing line value on Gibson and Dowdle. Those are those are the two mega ones. Singletary maybe dipping in a lot of the times with his first running back here. He actually likes ETN a lot too, so maybe kind of anchoring it with an ETN too. Yeah, well, he said he likes to draft a couple running backs early. So, yeah. Drew ETN fifteen percent. Have what? Huh? ETN at fifteen percent. Yeah, that's come down a little bit since uh, this doing slows and other things. Um, I bet he's closer to 11 now. Um, oh, wow. But my Jacobs has skyrocketed. Um, I, I Like I said, I'm usually taking two running backs early now. At the start, I was like all over the place. I didn't have a whole lot. Now I'm kind of – I want my two running backs. Then I can slam. It feels like receivers that i like as you can see uh kirk and godwin and all those guys i get like five of them um and then rook rookies galore um and that's kind of how i've been drafting now um but i do like getting too early now um etn was the guy early because i had not really on rashad white um uh, who's the other guy going around him uh, pacheco i haven't been clicking much um so i was taking etn there and then now that Jacobs and had some other guys come up there that I, I like too. So it's like, okay, I'm going to take them and ETN has been falling down a little bit, but. So you just listed all my fades. Those are all yeah, my hard that's, fades. That's what I said. And this we is why, like, I mean, so they didn't show up on this list because apparently we didn't put people I have zero on, but you named several of them. But I've got a bunch of these, like Elijah Mitchell, Miles Sanders. Uh, oh, I don't mind those. Th uh, but I'm talking oh, I about know, that I'm earlier. Saying, the earlier yeah. pocket is where I'm taking the wide receivers. Yeah, and see, and I'm usually taking just ignore two early, a lot of the and then a bunch of the handcuffs. Drew, I would like to know what's the thought process with going ETN and Bigsby? Like you're so high on both these guys. Where do you see? I just them like them both, and I think I think Bigsby is going to be the two there. So. I like them both. One's free what did, and one's... What did Bigsby show you, though? Oh, nothing. I just, again, you hear Coach speak. They they seem to like him. He looked good in the preseason. And who else are they going to use? Do you think they're going to draft a running back? I, I mean, I think they might do anybody that doesn't cost them I don't think plays they and so, maybe. touchdowns. And they and, could. I mean, I mean he was them. that bad. Like, I mean, yeah. he, he was, like, literally a liability when he, every time he was out there and touched the ball. But you think these guys, so, Etienne and Bigsby, help each other? As in, like, they have a Gibbs-Montgomery uh, role together? Oh, no, I don't have uh, – this Bigsby is purely – I think he's the backup to Etienne. I feel calm mm. confident he's going to be the backup going in. And I can get him in the 20th round. Like, that's that's what Tank is. It isn't – I don't and think are you he's taking get... Bigsby, obviously, on, on teams where you're not getting Etienne? Usually, yeah. Okay, okay. That, that was going to be my question, too. I don't mind – that as much as yeah. I wouldn't want no, to handcuff them together based on round, what you're saying. Sixth running back. I think he's the backup in Jacksonville. I can't say that about a bunch of running backs in that area. That's, I that's think fair. They could. Um, so that's, that's why he's there, but it's not, I don't think he's a stud. I don't think he's a league yeah. winner. I just 
I think he's the backup. And in this contest, but if you're, particularly, yeah. like there's so many dead teams by like even the start of the season. Go look at your go look through your oh. pods. There's so many dead teams just getting live players with some mm-hmm. upside. Like if he's a starter in Jacksonville, he's gonna be good. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm not a hard player stance. Just no, no. I, I I mean I, I like ETN. I just it's more structure wise why I have my fade. I actually do want to get some of him, and I know I will in other contests. It's mm-hmm. like I just haven't sweated it much. But I mean, with the bigs, we, as long as you're not taking them on the same team, because I don't think that I don't mind hand, like I don't mind two running backs on a team when you think they both have a role. But when you think it's just purely the backup, that's fine mm-hmm. to make the bet. On it's, separate would, teams, but not the same team to me. If I have them on the same team, I would bet it's one time. Yeah, I, that's I mean, yeah, and that's but, fine if it's in the minority like that yeah, in, mm. in general. Um, and then yeah, the Elijah Mitchell. I mean, same thing. You can see I draft a ton of these handcuffs, and they're all right about. There's not. I don't really like one more than the other. Like they're all mm-hmm. kind of that 19, 18, 19, 17. It's just how it fell. Um, and mm-hmm. again. I think Mitchell is the backup in San Francisco and I've seen him do pretty freaking good in that offense. So like a uh, running back that we've been, been a little about bit with but... the injuries. Yeah. But I don't care. He's I've seen it. Um, and I don't think they bring anyone else in. So he unless you think Jordan Mason is that's, the guy, yeah, sure. which is like every year that's been a thing. Oh, I can't take him one one Cause he's going to get hurt. Okay. That's fine. I'm just going to load up on Elijah Mitchell since I don't have, 15% CMC, like freaking Ben has. I gotta, you know. <laughs> what I really <laughs> like is is this 18% Benson. Yeah. I like that. I mean, again, you same stance, rookie going 120s. I want him. Anyone else to got to you, Nick, for Arby's? I mean, if we're just talking about like the guys that I haven't been clicking, it's Javante and Herbert, but. I like all the rookies that Drew's getting. Like I like the right clicks. Um, and he's getting he was getting right at one eighty seven, so that's awesome yeah. with where his ADP is at. This now. is huge. This uh, is huge. Benson's one of the like really good running back, rookie running backs to grab. Um I, I love the Dylan Labe click. <laughs> he's like yeah, it's uh, fun, huh? It's a fun yeah. click. I mean he everybody, is, he is everybody my... knows like where I'm at with him. Like he's the Long Island guy, like I'm rooting yeah. for him. Like I like the story uh, behind him. He's a it's awesome. disgust. Ah, he is my tank pick if I feel good about my running back room. Like if I have five running backs and they like, I'm like I I could rock with this. I go lob lobe. If I look at it and I'm like mm, I should probably at least make sure I get a backup. Then I go someone like Tank or someone like that. But yeah, and then we saw Drew was driving some Ray Davis. I hope I I helped play a part in you that did. one. That was that was you, right? Ray Never Davis to quite into the deep end like you. The but. Chargers is gonna be is gonna be the hope. All right, let's let's mix let's mix it up here. Drew's off again for his own exposures. <laughs> he can <laughs> wait to defend himself. Baker Mayfield at the top. Lube and Davis are like two of my highest rookies as well <laughs> in running backs. So, so I, I I will sit there and defend them. I like all day. Long. I like Richardson. I think even young, like how late he goes to like, I'm never going to diss this. I'm, uh, I'm pretty confident that young is going to be playing in week 17. So I'm down. That's kind right. of like, that's how I like earlier when you're saying, do they run? I'm like, do they play? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love that. Another t-shirt. Oh man. <laughs> so many t-shirts tonight. Uh, but this does make sense. Like Mayfield, he has, Godwin as his number one drafted receiver. He has Mike Evans, surprisingly, as a they gave him seven. the money. Yeah, exactly. So he this loves makes Tampa Bay. Sense. There's he no, does. there's no TB Bucks. O2 likes Tampa Bay. Who would have thought? You could show me all of our exposures blind, and I could pick his out. <laughs> <laughs> Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Uh, T Law, Mahomes, Murray, Hurts. Russell Wilson, I'm actually surprised to see Russ here. But uh, Byro, Daniels, Lamar, I like the exposures for the most part. I would want, you know, he's got he's got Richardson up here as a Russian QB, but really, Kyler, 10%. He's, he's got a few. Um, but again, sort of like a balanced drafter after that most, the highest exposed QB, 
he then has he then has Mayfield, or uh, he then has uh, May at seventeen. So how many of us have Sanders? I noticed that, and we kind of all avoided talking about him because we're all embarrassed after the pro day about taking him. Which one? The like, Jatavian? Been, Jatavian? Yeah, I'm talking about our tight ends. Yeah, the Jatavian. I know he was my highest as well, which I, I have stopped taking him after the pro day. So I, like, I was kind of – after yeah. I saw somebody only bench oh eight reps, I was embarrassed for myself and for him and wanted to lower my exposures. So I was at oh, but I've noticed several of us still take it or have him at the top. So I'm eight percent. I don't think it really matters a whole lot, like where it you're does. getting him when you miss. No, I'm not the reps. Oh, right? oh, oh. But like, well, not the reps, but him, the draft capital. Like, it's not gonna, it's not gonna kill a team by drafting him there. But, no, uh, but the drag, but the bet is different. Like. Yeah, the fact that you're taking him at all, pretty much, because I mean, would, would was... you draft Ben Sinnott in front of Sanders now? Would I draft two? So I say it one more time. Sinnott, the rookie Ben Sinnott. Oh, I, um, I, 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 not in front. Well, I have them. Okay, so in Dynasty, I have them literally back to back right now. Okay, took the easy. I way still, out. I still have Sanders <laughs> over, but I do take Sinnott more. But that's mostly the balance. Okay. At this point, because I had so much Sanders earlier. Got it. Got it. Bowers, Fryermuth, Schultz, Najoku, Juwan Johnson, Kate Otten is up here. Again, makes sense with the Mayfield. Uh, Mayer, I like the tight end exposure for the most part. He's He's got pits at an average of 81.3% draft pick. Currently at 64. I think he's risen too. Uh, Ingram is one that he was my highest exposed tight end i like that entry point at tight end in that ingram range especially like Pitts used to go there too so if you want to double tap like ingram and Pitts, um when Pitts was going late too i wasn't drafting as much of kincaid i wasn't drafting as much of mark andrews but i've kind of seen as the draft landscape has changed mixing in more of those earlier elite tight ends since the price of the later guys has, has moved up. And Nick, I you've think been, Gangram's awesome. And Nick's been Probably. done drafting for what a month? You you maxed about a month ago? Yeah, give or take. Yeah. So it'll be fun to see uh see Nick's exposures where he ended off. Pre combine? Just about? Or you left a couple for after the combine? Yeah, there was some left after the, the combine. Okay but really going heavy into his takes leading into the combine, trying to get the closing line value before it was. We're looking at juice tight ends here. Yeah. These are Drew's. I mean, I like all these guys. I mean, yeah. One of these guys outside, like I I'm high on Schultz too. So that's probably our biggest miss just with how that offense looks now. Like he's yeah. going to be like odd man out in that offense. Unfortunately, like he's the fourth option now. And I mean, he becomes touchdown dependent. Enough. Yeah, exactly. So, like, I, I'm high on him, too, so I can't really knock him for, for that pick. Uh, but it's what it is. We didn't, nobody saw that that happening. Right, right. Um, yeah, I, I mean, the tight ends is not a whole lot here. I like everyone on this list. The Zach Ertz at 6% might be a little surprising for me. That's <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised to see so much Zach Ertz, but uh, Ingram is 6%. Pretty balanced here. We're also super – both of us are low on the Chargers offense and his highest two or three are Bengals, Panthers, and the Bucks. The one, the only Bucks. So Giants, um, happy. I think that's good for him that he's low on that team for sure. Mm. Offensive, like Offense-wise, that, that team could be a disaster. But I think he's high on Rome and Dunze. So that's, I think, where all his percentage is, is coming from. Well, no, he's not included, right? Because um, Rome's no, a rookie. No rookies. Yeah. No rookies. No so rookies I'm a little surprised good. by, uh, yeah. I guess, well, I don't know where the 21% comes from. Maybe Singletary? Jones? Yeah, that makes sense. 
Ben, did you pretty much agree with the the tight ends? Do you like this list, or is there is there a hole in this market? Uh, I like the elites. Uh, they're just the value. I'm, but like Drew, Drew, like he said, he likes to draft early running backs, and I'm much more zero RB or hero RB. Like if I take a like, I don't. I like to lean more zero than hero. Um, mm-hmm. But if I take a running back early, it's like I'm almost definitely not touching running back again until like round eight. What's his Tampa Bay exposure, by the way? It's, it's 50, 50, like 56. 56. I, I thought it would have been higher. His his round one exposures are actually hilarious. Uh, a lot of fades yeah, I swear here. I would have got the house on like 80%. I like, you I, don't, and, uh, I don't mind this. Nick, you and Drew have the most uh, uh, polar, polarized data. That makes sense. You guys have like the biggest fades and then the largest – uh, yeah, I don't know if it's then, a good thing or not, but yeah, me and me and Drew are the same way. Steph, me and uh, Pat are all more conservative, more balanced in the first more round. Balanced. I think I had four percent yeah. Hill though, so that's that was yeah. My you're in Drew's first round. Like if Pat pulls up the chart, your guys is are like this. <laughs> like yeah, I will yeah. say though, I, I think like, like I played this contest how I wouldn't normally play it. Like if. I if I showed you my data for like BBM uh, last year, like it would have probably been a total opposite um, take on on how I drafted, which is how I'm probably gonna play BBM anyway. But I did want to change it up for this one. All right, Nick, let's. Oh my God, no! Yeah, you already know. No, no, forty eight percent, Michael Wilson. So okay. So you were saying the Michael the Wilson. You're saying Michael Wilson has a 48 percent chance to outscore the other 11 players in that range. In that range, probably not. It's probably not a good bet. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, if, if, I'm not a mathematician, but but uh, when you draft a lot the, of players, right? So yeah, yeah, the, the 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 outcomes could could vary, obviously. When you drafted though, like pre combine. He was safe. Like that range, he was safe. And I think in one draft you did with us, I forced us to go Roman Wilson over over Michael Wilson, and it almost broke you. <laughs> I mean, look, <laughs> almost broke you. What sucks, too, is that where I've been drafting him, his ADP hasn't changed. I don't know if that's because of me, but um, <laughs> uh, um, it's not like, I've, it's not like, I, like I, I didn't like benefit from taking so much of him. Like It would have been nice to have a huge bag of somebody and then all of a sudden their ADP moves up like even 20 picks and then you feel even better. But for it to stay flat the whole time kind of blows for me. But um you do no, I, still like, I still like him as a player. He's still a player that I want to root for. He's got a good story. Um he's like he's a good big player story on guy. Field. Nick confirmed big, big story, story guy. guy. Yeah, you'll see that Can they make a time. movie on him. Can they make a movie on <laughs> him right now? I mean, I, I, knew, I knew before um, Marquise went to the Chiefs that they they weren't going to have Marquise Brown. It was going to have to be a rookie receiver or someone they bring in to, you know, overtake him on the depth chart behind Trey McBride. Right. So, I mean, he's still in a good position, in my, and at least for me. That's how I – Yeah, I don't know if Marvin Harrison yeah, can overtake right. him. That one would be tough. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, even Marvin Harrison could come in, and, and he's such a huge – Profile. I, know. Um, I mean, look, when you're the number one receiver coming up the board, do you realize defenses are going to obviously script against that? So it does open up the field, I think, for other players when defenses have to heavily focus on a certain player on the team. That's and fair. It's, That's fair. it's tough That's for a Trey, rookie. Trey, Trey on the team. <laughs> I mean, defenses aren't going to double yeah. cover Michael Wilson like. It's, they're going to focus on Trey McBride and Marvin Harrison for what it's. Kyler concerned. Murray so, is known to be a third look guy too. Okay, that is a I love third that. look so, quarterback. The <laughs> biggest that. problem I have with it is your seven percent Kyler. So yeah, your I, most I, I can, owned, yeah. Q, your highest owned receiver, is with the QB that you have under the field on. That's where it's like. So why are you taking Michael Wilson without Kyler too? You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like I mean, that's I'll, where I'll tell you this. Every in. time I've tried to take in – I've tried to get a Kyler team, I've ended up missing on Michael Wilson because someone drafted him for me. And then the times that I no. 
got Michael Wilson, I wasn't able to get Kyler. So it was like so a lot of drafts. Hits, even if he hits on week 17, you don't have – most of that 7% isn't like – Connected. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it is, it is what it is. I should be way is. higher on Kyler. I, I don't disagree with you. Ridley, I think we were both making the bet that he was going to go to Jacksonville, although you definitely ended up with a lot more than me. 28% is, is a thick amount. You don't see a huge fall, though, because the receivers that go after Ridley, first off, there's not a lot, and then you have that receiver dead zone. So... You have to put someone there. I, I don't know if Ridley in this range still at Tennessee is the best value. So like if a new contest opened today, would you be drafting Ridley at his current ADP? I'd be mixing in some players around yeah. him now, but I, I still like him. Okay. Uh Pearsall, which I love, average ADP of two fifteen. This is a yep. huge, huge smash. Huge smash. Yeah, I wore this jersey just for stuff, by the way. I just there wrote, it is. It's the, Michael, the Michael Wilson jersey. <laughs> Douglas, 27%. Another one that I'm like, you got to come off these clicks that are safe. You got to be drafting. I think it was – who were we saying that was in that range? I think it was Roman Wilson mainly. There were a lot of range. rookies around DeMario. There still are. Yeah. Bright, Brendan Rice, Jermaine Burton, who you put us on early – Wondell Robinson, Myers, DJ Moore. This is actually a surprising one. Mike Williams, and, and you get a great landing spot too. You must have been stoked about this. Yeah, I just was buying into hopefully a, res- a resurgence season coming off the injury. I think he's got a good athletic profile if he stays healthy. I mean, it's it's all about his health at this point. If he's not healthy, it's a terrible click. Of course. He's so how good is the Cardinals upside. offense? This is my question. I think it's pretty good, to be honest. So it's good um, enough to support Trey McBride going where he goes, Marvin Harris Jr., and Michael Wilson with his 1.36 yards per route run, uh, wide receiver 80. Please, please, please don't leave out James Conner. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think, James Conner's done Michael pretty good. Wilson, we have to understand, right, he was a rookie. Sophomore year receivers normally take a step forward. It's proven that usually sophomore receivers always, a lot of them take a huge step forward their sophomore year in their rookie season. Okay, but Um, there's also there's also signals of what the yards per out run should be, and where their finish should be. Of like you know where somebody should already finish as like at least a wide receiver three or have a certain level, and he didn't hit other. He didn't hit other, but he hit other levels and then they're going to draft somebody that's supposed to be like one of the best talents that we've seen in a long time well yeah but come on right away a, so it, i mean it's, it's not necessarily going to be an easy path no of course not, for, for, like for the level i'm not saying don't have any when it's correlated but the level that you're betting on seems like a lot yeah, no well one think about it this know. way so if teams know that they draft let's say they draft marvin harrison that's worst case scenario but for them, best case scenario. <laughs> How is that the worst he's, case scenario? Well, he's the best receiver on the board, so it would be worst case scenario, right? For for the rookies. Well, well I guess for, for your exposures, yes. But at the same time, now they bring in a guy like Marvin Harrison. How do you think defenses are going to scheme that team when they know Marvin Harrison is by far their best receiver on paper? So how did they scheme it last year when they didn't have him well, and he still didn't do that great? I was hurt like most, most of the year anyway. Uh, no, but I'm talking about Michael Wilson still didn't do that great last year when there was no other competition. So now when there's really well, elite competition, he's going to do well just because well, defenses will, are going to yeah. scheme? I mean, well, that doesn't necessarily seem – like something I would have bet almost fifty percent of my teams on. Now I'm not saying again. It was only a third round pick. He wasn't really drafted to like step into a role right away for them. Like, well, I know. Them, like, need to get sped up into the offense. Like, they don't just like unless you're a first round draft pick. Like, more normally, like a, a like a third round draft capital receiver like Michael Wilson. Like, they, they don't just like get thrown into the offense right away and just produce. No, they don't. And they, but they, but he didn't really come on at the end of the season like we want to see either. He didn't show a lot of the marks that we want to see. He didn't necessarily earn a bigger role. He wasn't showing anything that made me really bullish on him heading into his second year. And the fact that they're now setting, 
two touchdowns, 100 plus yards. I think that was the San Francisco game. Like, he's had the games where he's shown off. But now they're drafting the best receiver we've seen prospect in several years as I, I, almost I think a certainty. That it, it will help him out if you have to understand what kind of role he's going to play in, in the offense. It, I'm not expecting him to be the number one alpha receiver on this team. But Marvin Harrison's going to have to deal with a lot of pressure. And they're going to, like, in my opinion, yeah. defense will focus on heavily more on guys like Trey McBride and Marvin Harrison as I opposed just think, to someone like Michael Wilson. Yeah, but like I said, he didn't show up. It's not like he showed out when he had those chances to that level by himself without all of that last year. I just I just don't think that I want half of my exposure to I'm not saying, again, like when you have some Kyler stacks, I'm not saying to fade him by any right. means, but I think that you're going a little too heavy would be well, my opinion. So Michael Wilson it, it seems like a big bet and fading everyone numbers, else. Um, for the most part, Michael Wilson on my teams are like my receiver, like five or six. So like he's not burning me in, in a sense where it's more about the exposure in. level. Yeah, of course. Because you're still but, fading a lot of people at right. that. Like if you're but, taking him, you're not taking several other people. They're going that. I, right. I don't hate having forty eight percent of my fifth or sixth receiver as one player for me in, in a contest. And where that I, that's I, your bet. Yeah, it's it's a bet. That's. Strictly all it is, right? Yeah. Yeah, I just don't have that sort of risk tolerance myself, and especially looking at the numbers, it doesn't make me bullish on going all in on that type of bet. That And that's to, my we're style. Gonna to, we're going to have to make a bet, stuff between me and you. We like, will. Like a good baseline number for him, like to, to retain his ADP. Like what does he need to produce in terms of how many yards, fantasy points, et cetera? And what does everybody else not have to hit that's going at that ADP that right. you're fading? Well, I'm not going to bet against Because it's like, got to be relative I'm not bet, to a, a bet point. It's like 11 guys in his range that he's going to finish. Well, but what if I have some of them and you have none of them? Well, I don't think I do. But this, like, I'll, I'll take a bet straight up if you'd like to say, like, hey, I believe in this player who goes in the same ADP as Michael I'll, Wilson. I'll have to look at it. So yeah, I yeah. can make real, formulate real something. quick, real we'll, quick. We'll, do, we'll put a we'll put something together. Real quick, Ben is heading out, and just want to give him the last shout for putting all these charts together, going through and putting just compiling all this data on the big board for five people. It's just amazing, and uh, just want to thank you before you head out. Yeah, you bet. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, if you uh, use the charts or whatever. Uh, well, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll catch the rest of the stream, so. Hell yeah. I'll see you Hell yeah. But, yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. All right, Ben, we'll guys. catch you, dude. Thank you. Continue the bet. What was the bet going to be? <laughs> we haven't made it yet, and I need to, like, think about this logically before, but I haven't had half a bottle of wine. No. <laughs> That's going to come with a guy, but they got to be within, like, a similar ADP range. Yeah, of course. Like, of course. I'll take anybody within, like, you know, around – Part, you know what I mean? Like within that that gap. No, it'll be somebody that you would have logically faded based on your exposure, <laughs> well, <laughs> or be underweight on. Yeah, yeah. Damn, I like it. In that, I'm down for that. In that I'm point. Down. All right. Make it happen. The Discord. Amari Cooper, eighteen. Which I think this is just you're slamming wide receivers through the first three, four rounds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just Puka like at fifteen percent. All right, now I have to skip right to your first round exposures. Puka at 15 or 16, A.J. Brown at 16, Garrett Wilson, and then we have the running back fades with Gibbs yeah. and Bijan. So a little bit. Are you going Puka over Amadra? No, I just – I wasn't He's getting – drafted on the back end. I just wasn't getting all the picks that you would get St. Brown. I was getting that like – I guess the ninth overall pick where like St. Brown just goes a pick before him. And Got it. that's where all my exposure is. You can, you can only do so much. So you draft on the back end and then the very top, not the worst. Yeah. I actually don't, I didn't mind the back end. No, me either. But in the beginning and it's not going to show it cause Garrett Wilson is uh he was a second round pick in the beginning, but right. I was getting like, like you guys were talking about um, earlier. Like I was getting all those like, uh, 12th, 11th, and 12th picks, and I was getting like all the 
AJ Brown, Garrett Wilson stacks oh, just yeah. at the end there. And I was loving it. That's a beautiful thing. That's yeah. beautiful. They felt really good though, did they? Yeah, of course. Oh, like God, yeah. they're both smash players. Like for receivers in that range. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Made no sense. On to the running backs. 56% Ray. The man Davis. <laughs> oh, we got an eye roll on a snap. No, no, I actually, I am close to like 30%. I'm just kind of okay. like obsessed right. that he has more. Right. I was going That's heavier weird. earlier, like, but then his team like kind of went down, which mm -hmm. made no sense because yeah. in the draft community, his team has not gone down. Like it's the same, if not better, actually. Yeah, like, he might, sucks, like he might, like he, yeah, but people were reaching on him for like for a while. He was the hot commodity that people were like yeah. trying to get in that range. I mean, obviously within something or his ADP would be more reflective. But for for like my sake, I would have loved if he like went up into like the Jalen Wright at like stratosphere, mm -hmm. and I'm like I would just be happy with what I had already, and yeah, else would have to be paying the premium, and he hasn't done that. So you could still get him at the same price that I've been getting him, and it's. It is what it is. Well, that, that's what happens to me. It's like I'll pass. He's one of those guys again. I'll pass on around two, three, and then he's still there. And I'm like, well, I guess I'll taking a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, I, I think interesting. So Nick has the lowest amount of rookies, and I think this has something to do with maybe drafting pre combine. So 96 percent of your teams have at least one rookie. I think I had the next uh, lowest with 98 percent. Yeah, it and definitely then, came from like wow. being drafting so early in the contest and doing a lot yes. early on and not really wanting to take stabs at rookies yet because you just have like no information outside of what you right. see on um, like YouTube or watching them in college. Like you just, there's nothing to, to gauge yet. So like a lot mm -hmm. of my teams are just like strictly just trying to get like guys that were, you know, vets. Yeah. And Wilson and Boyd. <laughs> a lot of Wilson, obviously. Yeah. I mean, that's where I take a lot of rookies. So that, that'll that probably end up being our bet. We'll probably be like a rookie somewhere in there. Right now, yeah. great, great closing line value over two rounds on Zimmer White, averaging, you know, you, you got him at 126.5. The Aaron Jones thing, I covered it before you got on, but like, doesn't make any sense that now Jacobs is in that situation and he rises up to near the you know, near the second round, you know, top of the third. Um, so I was I also thirty percent of that is probably when Jones is on the Packers. And That's what I was going to ask. Nobody, yeah, that makes more sense. Nobody saw that like bus hitting Jones and Jacobs coming in, and then Jones mm -hmm. getting shipped. Like I, I mm -hmm. was drafting him as he's a good like running back. He's still, I think, only twenty six. Like there was no reason for them, in my opinion, to like really like move on from him. Like they basically got another running back at the same age that now has an injury the year before. Like, mm -hmm. so I, I just like him being on the Packers. I liked him being on the Packers more than Minnesota, by the way. But no, I I agree. I was gonna say I was drafting him quite a bit. He was one of the only guys in that kind of dead zone I was drafting yeah. prior to him changing teams mm -hmm. because it made sense. Like I I same mindset i think even but like one, then i let backed off yeah and because of so many was was talking like jones up over jacobs in that range about oh definitely yeah, he everyone was, everyone was over and, and then all of a sudden you know yeah the news hit and it just didn't make sense and, and what happens is aaron jones who you know i thought when he was at his current at his old adp when he was still in green bay i thought he went a full round too late and it proved to be true because, I mean, you put Jacobs in a situation now, all of a sudden everyone loves the Green Bay yeah, situation with two thing. running backs. Like, So what sucks more is now the community that was in on Jones. We get effed in one situation. Then we also aren't taking Derrick Henry, who also goes right there, and he gets the landing spot at Baltimore. We get double bone. Yeah. Yeah. That sucks. Uh, but do we like, ever take Henry? Like, isn't this every year? Like, we're like, yeah, he's good, but we can't take him. <laughs> last, year, last year was the Houston. It was. It wasn't until the schedule came out. Like, he's got Houston twice. Like, fuck, I got to draft Eric Henry now. Like, <laughs> I love, I, love that. I, I, hate that. I hate that up. By the way, I was all in on that theory. 
We all were. Two percent until that happened. But it's funny. I I, I, how- I still ended up low, but I still was in on theory. <laughs> Nick Nick smashed on some closing line value here though with Zamir White with Dowdle. Jacobs is a big one. Chuba gets actually a slight fall, which is interesting because his situation really hasn't changed. I think it's yeah. more the guys around him than Chuba himself. Right. I mean, I'm only high on Zamir and Jacobs because I bought into the narrative that the Raiders weren't going to bring him back. Zamir could possibly be the RB1 for them. Yep. So you end up getting both. and that. Yeah. I'm worried about Waddle, though. I mean, not Waddle. Not Waddle. Um, know where that came from rico doddle 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 and waddle they rhyme <laughs> see as i just yeah. think that they're gonna bring some people in oh definitely yeah i think so too i mean if it's, honestly i don't even mind it i think it's better if it is a rookie like jonathan brooks because i do think although brooks probably by the end of the season would be the rb1 if he's healthy i do think they're gonna have to lean on like a veteran like Dowell to to get him kind of up to speed. Um, I think they're going to bring in another vet though. There's right Zoom. now there's a small. Well, there's a small like they had the rumors, but what a lot of people forget is they would have to give up the compens compensatory picks for hmm. I forgot till how long. But there's a period where they can then start taking a veteran again and not have to give him up. I have to look at all yeah. the rules, but I think that might be what's holding it up rather than them not making a move. So yeah, I think I'm people sure. are kind of like, oh, we're out of the word work for them not getting Zico. They just said that and it was bullshit. No, they're just waiting where they don't have to give up a copy. A pencil, a whatever. The, God. A copy. We copy. We Damn it. These words are hard. I know. Pretty bottle of wine. He did look like pretty, had it. pretty decent. Yeah, blame um, my mom. He looked pretty <laughs> decent with Tony for what, what he had to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Change change the pace back again. Even if they bring in Zeke, like that might actually be good for him. If they bring in Brooks or Dobbins, like those are both good for him based on where he's going. Change the pace back. Early yeah. workload should be pretty nice. I mean, by the way, I just don't I'm trust draft, Jerry. Where, where I'm drafting him, by the way, I was getting him at like 191. Like he's yeah. technically going yeah. That with that's all, different. He's going with all the handcuff running backs different. at that point. So like, yep. to me, like it, it just was an easy click when you're getting him that late. Yeah. anyway. definitely. Yeah, I'm more talking about his new price where he's risen to. I have no problem the where you drafted is him. Tough because he doesn't have because the highest upside. He doesn't have the highest upside in that range, and I think that's what makes him tougher to click today. Mm-hmm. No, and I think that they're still going to bring some other people in. Not yeah. obviously, we think the rookies, yeah, but yeah, the other side of for it sure. for that range because Jerry's an idiot and they're gonna sit there and still try to play him, even if he sucks. Rodriguez is probably the biggest one I'm disappointed in, but Pat kind of hung me on that one. Like, I was following, I was following Pat right into the grave. On- <laughs> <laughs> hey, Gibson left, Gibson left, part of our dream Wait, came whoa, whoa. true. Uh, yeah, last round pick. It's it's just it's it's what I, I took him a couple times, but it well, was pretty. I, nice. I, I thought like obviously when Eckler comes, it's it's game over for him. But you know when it was just B Rob and and Chris Rodriguez, like I thought when you're drafting him, you're drafting him as like a scat back third down role on that team. I mean that yeah. that role is oh, yeah. over with. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was an early click that at the time it made, made sense. sense. And the dream yeah. quickly dies. And again, I think a lot of us are doing a lo- like zero RB to the max, yeah. especially to start the contest. Um, yeah, before yeah. Eckler, he felt like a good click. I was just I was dipping on deal. Pat's juice on that one. You have to, you have to. Let me hear it. Pacheco, twelve percent. This one's interesting because I take you as a zero RB type guy, but. You like to enter RB. It looks like pretty, pretty early. Yeah, I mean, I would love to be even a lot, a lot of anchor. Or are you going double? Are you going double anchor? I just normally would would get two running backs that I would like to hit my mm-hmm. lineup in the finals and kind of build like all positions after that, and then start to get like more running backs after my two. Mm-hmm. This one's interesting to me. Like Brian Robinson at pick 108, I think is, I, it feels like that's wrong. It feels like he should be where Eckler is. 
and Eckler should be at probably later than 108, but yeah, I, I, I don't I, know. I don't see Eckler in my ranks. Right. I took Eckler off mine right. completely. I, I think I might have zero Eckler like from all my drafts. Like I just he's old, he looks slow, like it was not the, the same player at well, the end well, of the year. Well age yeah. discrimination, nothing crazy. I mean B Rob B Rob seems to be trending the other the other direction. Yeah. So Yeah. Deshaun Watson. This is why I take zero RB. <laughs> Deshaun Watson, highest owned QB. So did what we saw to start the year last year and then the year previous where he played like the last five weeks or whatever it was, bad. This yeah, year, it wasn't good. does it change? You're getting him at pick 155. So he doesn't have to go out there and, you know, be year two Trevor Lawrence, right? So like when... You were saying how like I drafted a lot of Marvin Harrison. I mean, sorry, Michael Wilson. I should have more Kyler Murray, which I agree. But yeah, I also a lot have of a Amari lot Cooper. of Amari Cooper. So I correlated a ton of that with, with Deshaun Watson. I mean, we're talking about a quarterback that's getting paid way too much money. And he can't go into another season having the same kind of results the way he's getting paid. Is I my kind of thinking. Like, and he, he needs to have – I'm just betting on his, like, resurgence with – yeah. The weapons he has, I was drafting him before the Judy news. And I think after the Judy news, it should actually help him out with weapons. I mean, mm -hmm. you have Cooper, Judy, Elijah Moore, uh, David Njoku, Njoku. Who, like, who just looked like, like, a, like a beast unleashed at the end of the year. Like he's under Flacco really, though, under Flacco. Yeah, but, but, but you're still seeing, you're still seeing the player and yeah. what they're capable of doing. So, like, he's got so many stars around him that are good players. Like, feels like he should be good, and, and he's a late quarterback. You're getting him, like, way after a lot of guys. The price. So, is you know that he had a glenoid fracture, right? Yeah, no, I know about the injuries. And it was a full – well, well, no, it was a full fracture, full labrum tear. It's a serious, very serious injury that he has to come back from for throwing and stuff, too. So it's yep. we saw he wasn't quite the same quarterback. He had a pretty serious injury on top. There's a lot going that could go wrong. I mean, they're invested, so they're not going to bench him or like call their own bluff. Yeah. But he could be slower out of the gate than we're expecting. It could be a rougher road than we yeah, want to see. But you're taking risks on a lot of guys that can re-injure themselves between. Well, not re-injure. It's coming back from an injury. There's a difference. Oh, yeah. Rogers goes in this it. range. What Rogers is like twelve picks. Yeah, more expensive I mean, or, are we not taking? Yeah, yeah but 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 he's like, not okay. But his feet aren't his arm. The throwing the ball. I would I would counter with maybe Watson will actually run the ball this year, where Rogers it's not an option. Possibly. Like we didn't see that rushing upside. But if he, he returned to the NFL, hit. I think I think that was the biggest disappointment with Deshaun. But that was also that. before his injury. So what makes you think once he's Got a serious, to serious injury. He's going to want to take that risk on himself because he's already I mean, got his yeah, money. Yeah. Play a couple games, get hurt, sit the rest of the season, go to the Bahamas. Yeah, but he's not going to want to get hit on a run. Like, you know, on, when you run, you get hit. If I'm going to bet on Amari Cooper, I mean, yeah, they can, oh, no. if, if they're going to, if, if Deshaun gets hurt or can't throw the ball very well and they have to figure out a new quarterback, then like, I don't know who you try and pick up. I mean, Amari Cooper could still be good, but I think his his highest ceiling is with Deshaun Watson, right? Mm -hmm. I imagine. It's a, it's a fair bet to make. Are, I'm you, just, are you making a I'd lot still of take him. three QB teams or two? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, for these kind of contests, with okay. 20, 20 rounds, I go three quarterbacks. Okay. Yeah, so it makes a lot more sense. I mean, you're saying like, I have 6% Bo Nix, so even some of my teams, like my third quarterback is Bo Nix, but yeah. it's just a bet on a rookie. Again, I but I want people that I know are playing, that's just yeah. me. I'm not saying Bo Nix may not. Like, he may. I can make a case where he does, but I don't go I quite that deep in these. I love the 17% Lamar Hurts. We're getting the Russian QB upside here. Um, Prescott. 15%. So you're actually leaning in to you have one, two, three, four, five, six. You have seven QBs above 15%. I think that's the highest on this list. You I take stands two. more than the rest had, of us. I had two. 
I think for this contest, it might it might show that way. But I'm right. just being like honest. Like when if we were to do this kind of exposure, like and we looked Two. at like BBM five, for example, like I won't be I won't be forty something percent of Michael Wilson at BBM five. I, I just I are you sure? Up. I think so. <laughs> I just didn't want to put that much on the line for a contest of that magnitude and how much money mm-hmm. you're putting into it. Like, um, I definitely play it more conservative for sure. Um, you're going for guaranteed guaranteed points too, right? Like the Michael Wilson click is not deemed a bad click yet. 48% maybe a little ridiculous. I think you agree. <laughs> like you wish some of those shares were someone else, yeah, but I agree. over the rookies, there's no saying those rookies are going to succeed over Michael Wilson. There's, a very good chance that Michael Wilson outscores those rookies in a season long type contest. So I, I think with some of those clicks, you were going off after like uh, raw points too. Yeah. But I mean, even if you're thinking about it from a finals point of view, you want the players that are going to put the most points up in your, your finals team, not for right. necessarily advancement. So, right. Right. Which is the reason why I was trying to get you to click Roman Wilson, Xavier worthy lad. Well, I have a okay. good amount of Roman Wilson, I'm pretty sure. I, I know. Yeah. Just high. Yeah. Tight ends Goddard, 25%. Go super late. Uh, definitely an easy guy to click, I will say. And then you're pairing it with a ton of Hertz, which makes a lot of sense. Njoku, again, with the Watson, Deshaun Watson. So you're correlating super well, which I love because when you're right, when you're really right and they become values based on their ADP, it's going to really help your advance rates. Schultz, Ferguson, Conklin, Andrews, Juwan Johnson. Like I like these these tight end exposures. Yeah, I just don't like Schultz. I mean, I would love for Schultz to be down the, like the digs. The, the digs thing the hurts. Double digits percent at this point, but but you got him at one thirty two. So yeah, was, small bright side. Him, obviously, before, without like knowing digs was going to be on the team, and 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 so whatever it is, what it is. Kyle Pitts, thank God, ninety one average draft pick. <clears throat> that just shows you how late he was going. Nick finished, if you guys are just joining us, finished all 150 drafts just around, just after the combine. So he's really slamming these drafts before the combine. 7% Ingram. I think this one surprised me. It's the second person with that was underexposed on Ingram. And it's it's one of my it's one of my biggest stands at tight end. I think it is my biggest stance. Yeah, I would. I'd rather much. It's pretty I'd, big. I'd, I'd much rather have Ingram over Schultz at this point. Let's be honest. Of course, but the the ADP oh, yeah. difference. You were getting Schultz at one thirty. Ingram, you averaged at eighty three point eight, which is he has risen uh, over a half round in that time. Still. Yeah, I was just still worried about Ridley when I was drafting my drafts and the Ridley Kirk and then. Ingram still being possibly the third target on the team with Ridley being out now. It's awesome for him, but that was kind of like, unfortunately I was getting a lot of Lawrence with Ridley and not taking Ingram with it. So what's crazy is after that Ridley news happens, Ingram doesn't get a huge rise. And he should. Like, and he should. I've just been basically spamming him since that news is broken without yeah. much of a cost, like yeah. a cost increase. Same. Yeah. He's, he's, he it should be good. a much better target than Gabe Davis, technically. You know? But last oh. year, his targets were ridiculous. Like, he was one of the highest target rated tight ends yeah, with like, Ridley in the offense last year. So, why are people not taking him this year like that? Like, it makes no sense with even better, right. right? lesser competition. But, guys, if you haven't already, go down, slap the like if you enjoyed today's live stream. Hit the subscribe button. We're going to be making videos all summer long. Best ball content focused. We're going to get some high stakes. We did do all three biggest boards. I think, Nick, did you join me on one of those or we tried yeah, to do we got, one? We got one together. Yeah. But it was, I wasn't in the stream. I was, you know, you were streaming. I was in your, your room. Right. The team exposures Cardinals 63%, Ravens 62%, Brown 66 We definitely got some stands here on elite offenses, supposedly. Cardinals elite potential, hopefully. I hope so. Bills 24%. Broncos 7%. This is yeah. almost a full fade of the entire Denver franchise. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not a fan of that offense by any means. And a lot of it is mostly Judy before 
he got traded. So Copy. no love for Sutton in that range. I actually don't mind him as much now, I guess, because of just how that the- receiver room looks with him. But again, I just don't know who's throwing the football to the, like any of those receivers as of now. I mean, Bo Nix might be their quarterback. So I mean, maybe six percent. <laughs> maybe, I but I mean, he's up. a. But he's a wide receiver one in an offense going at that price still. So, yeah. I mean, somebody's got to catch him off. I'm, I'm just worried that it's it, – I don't know. I just need to know who's throwing the football first, in my opinion. Because Bo Nix isn't terrible. No, he's not. I actually like him at, like – I was like, I'm like, I, I don't hate so maybe, him. Maybe exposure like, goes like, to 13%. I, like his, I think he would be a good quarterback. But, again, I don't know if he is going to be their quarterback. And yeah. – um even if you're the number one receiver on a team, like if you're an offense that can't move the ball, like it, it doesn't matter. No, nah, for, for, I'm not overexposed by any means, but his price makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind his price. That's fun. 6% Bo Nix would bring you to 13% Broncos. It would almost double, <laughs> It'd almost double your Denver exposure. <laughs> oh, shit. Colts, 22%. I think this one may be a little surprising. Is JT getting hated on too much? Or with the Zach Moss moving on, is it just safer to wait for the draft to see if they do anything with the running back room? Or is A. Rich just taking all the touchdowns? I have almost a full fade, so I'm the wrong person to ask. So you think A. Rich significantly impacts Taylor's upside? Possibly, but it's more just where he goes price wise. It's just mm-hmm. not working for me at the moment. Like I would I still would take him over plenty of people, but he's just gone where I would take him. But I do I do think A Rich caps that and then I haven't seen him breaking the big plays in a year. Mm-hmm. I, I'd rather see that again. Again, we're we're betting on a guy that's going really early. I want a little more information than I want the certainty they're not taking someone else on to. In BBM, I will end up with some. I'm not going to end up on a full fade of him overall. Yeah. But in this contest, for the moment, it's not worth it to me. That's fair. That's fair. I And I'm like, I'm below field on JT. I do think after free agency, I think Kyron is a sneaky free agency winner. I think JT is actually a sneaky free agency winner. Uh, this isn't a class that everyone is like super worried about. I don't think Indy goes ahead and drafts like Trey Benson or even Jalen Wright. And I mean, what are we talking about? We know that JT is their guy. They're not drafting. Right. Right. It's going to demand draft capital that he gets overtaken by anybody. It's really just a matter of what you think that offense looks like with with him. And I mean, for me, unfortunately, before Zach Moss was let go, I was clicking on different people instead mm-hmm. of JT. Now I'm mixing him in a little bit more, but I still even like someone like Saquon Barkley over him just because I want the offense. Like I want that's the Philadelphia fine. offense over the Colts offense. And I think he's a player that you can just skip the contest on, which I think is what Steph's doing right now. Is like just skip the contest on JT, see what happens in the draft, sort of readjust and if you think he's a bad value in that range based on where he's going, then fade. But I think single game ceiling, it's tough to have, in my opinion, it'd be tough to have less than 4% of, of JT for my personal exposures. Someone that I and honest, doing all the work. And honestly, as I look, I'm probably only maybe five, six picks behind probably in rankings, but that's enough to, for me to literally never see him. Right. Because right. people reach on it. Like, so I'm not that far behind, like in yeah. theory of where I think he should go, but I don't see him in it. Cause I'm just getting so much of the wide receivers. I exactly. have to like him better. Exactly I like him for where he goes better than Saquon. Mm-hmm. I, I like just- his, I like his spot. Well, also some of the more advanced metrics that I've seen, I've seen him break big plays and his broken tackle rate and some other things look better for JT than Saquon for what I've seen recently. That's fair. Interesting. All right, guys. I think that's it. It was a, it was a fun one tonight. Do we have uh, any words for the people that 
that stuck it through. We we've been live for two hours and forty minutes. This has definitely been the longest <laughs> one. Uh, what, do we have I anyone think, left? <laughs> I, I, think of, I think we covered every player multiple times. So uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys doing this one with me. Thanks for uh, thanks for thanks having, for having us. us. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, this is, this is great. Ben, again, huge shout out to Ben, putting all the charts together. And uh, yeah, hope, hopefully we get this again during a best ball mania. This was this was awesome. This was awesome. But yeah, if you guys I, didn't already, give these guys a follow on the Twitter machine. Um, let me see if I can, I can link it. I'll put it in the description of the video. And uh, yeah, make sure you follow these guys. Steph, do you have anything in the works? Uh, I'm working on a dynasty startup article. Mm -hmm. So hopefully I'm planning on getting that out like right before the draft. Perfect. Perfect. And that's through leg up. Yeah. Hell yeah. Awesome. Nick, you finished your little board drafts. Everything's done, man. I've just been doing <laughs> NBA at this point because, uh, there's nothing else for me to do on underdog. So that's awesome. Um, yeah. That's awesome. I'll Always wait for the new stuff to drop. Drafts. All right, better. Well, thanks for coming out, guys. If you did enjoy the stream, go down, slap the like on the way out, and we'll catch you on the next one. Pounders.